I'm about to work this $10 million job as a professional athlete. And I'm going to show you the difference between this and getting paid $200,000 to be an astronaut. This is insane. Getting paid $100,000 to dig up real dinosaur bones. Oh my god. And so many other jobs. Starting with the lowest paying job I could find, gold panning. That can make as little as $1 a year. But we're going to make millions. Statistically not. Basically, gold panners put dirt in this mechanism, and with enough shaking and water, all of the gold is filtered out to the bottom. But it's not very easy, because after five hours of searching, I was definitely not rich. Oh, boys! I found gold! No! How much is that little nugget worth? That is two cents. Exactly my point. You could do this for a whole year and only make a dollar. But luckily for us, we're going to be working jobs that pay over $10 million per year. But first, let's see what it's like to work a job that pays $100,000 per year. Digging up dinosaur bones for a museum. And yes, these are fake because they're all dead. So this is just one of our pits. Are these actually dinosaur bones? They are. I've been here 17 really? years. This is easily the largest bone that I've ever worked on in my career. This is your thigh bone right here, and it's over four feet tall. For comparison, here's that dinosaur next to six corals stacked on top of each other. Keep in mind, I'm 6'5". These are mini jackhammers, essentially. How you doing it? He has no idea what he's doing. He has no idea. Now, this may come as a surprise, but we are god awful at this. Whoops. Be careful. It took us five hours to make any progress whatsoever. But even with us holding him back, with the help of the expert, we were getting somewhere. This is easily the largest bone that I've ever worked on in my career. And you let me and Carl touch that? Absolutely. What if we messed it up? Josh, how much does this weigh? Probably gonna be two, 250. Pounds? Yep. This is one tenth the weight of Nolan's mom. Oh, oh wow. Now, because this bone is so ancient, we have to cover it in a cast before we pick it up, or else it could literally break in half. Let's hope it doesn't fall apart when we lift it. One, two, three. Oh, yes. Hi, way, baby. Good job. This is the first time any humans have ever carried this bone. Just a YouTuber carrying a dinosaur bone. Ugh. Front of the table. One, two, three. Watch your hands up. And believe it or not, this dinosaur bone did find its way into a museum. But because museums are boring, let's head over to the $200,000 job. Astronaut training with NASA. And my first mission, learn to drive the official lunar rover. This is what will one day be on the moon. Yeah, this is how we're going to get around the surface of the moon. Why are they letting me drive this? Play War Thunder now. Join millions of players across the globe in massive battles on tanks, aircraft, and helicopters in the most extensive vehicle combat game ever made. Take control over the battlefield in ground vehicles, rain down rocket volleys in helicopters, dogfight your enemies in aircraft, and bomb whatever is left into the dust. Play on more than 1,500 authentic hey, hey. military vehicles from early World War II to present Just day. Just getting everything set. Experience the transition from historic biplane fighters and iconic World War II tanks to supersonic jets and modern battle tanks fighting alongside attack helicopters. Upgrade your vehicles. Customize. Open the doors! How do I work this thing? Push forward on the stick. Right now? Yeah, go forward. Push whoa, forward. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't kill us. I'm scared. You good? Oh, this is amazing. Go ahead and twist. To the right? To the right or left. I don't care. Oh my god, there are cars. Is this street legal? Uh, street illegal around here. Oh, this is amazing. Why are we driving sideways? I haven't figured out how to straight it yet. And even though I'm driving like I'm actually drunk, I still managed to get us to NASA's lunar training yard where the real test is gonna be. Oh, we're off-roading. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, this is getting bumpy. You're gonna let me drive it down this hill? Is there seat belts in this thing? There's a seat belt we don't use right there. Then. Yeah. <laughs> They've got seat belts they don't use. That's that's helpful. Oh, oh, that's God. way too steep. Oh, no way. Are we really going down? Can I get that seat belt down? Oh, my God! Oh. Wait, we're going down the hillside. Oh, no, no. Lift your hand so they can see I'm driving. I, he's actually yeah. left. I'll get up and let Nick. No, 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 sit there. No. Go sideways in the crater? Sure. Hold me, Carl. Hold me. Landon, I'm just going to say it. You wouldn't survive on the moon. Uh, I reckon I could do it. Next in training, NASA showed me around their enormous space facility. Holy crap. This is the second largest pool on Earth. Which I'll be honest, it just felt like they were flexing on me. Especially when they showed me the space suit. As far as anybody's concerned, once you try on a space suit, you're an astronaut. But of course, there was a catch. When you go on a spacewalk, you have to wear a diaper. You're in the suit for 12 hours. Wow. 
There you go. It's like an actual real adult diaper, okay. So be careful. This yeah. is a space artifact. It's flown on the space shuttle several times. So real astronauts have worn this. Yes. Keep in mind that astronaut peed in this. Have you peed in this suit? I, not in this suit, no. Okay. When's the next mission? What are you doing a, a year from now? I can make time. Okay, okay. And the final step of my training was the craziest thing I've ever done. They were gonna let me touch the moon. Now, now, lean back into it because it weighs 9,000 pounds. This weighs 9,000 pounds? Oh, oh, this, this is the largest collection of moon rocks on display anywhere in the world. I can't believe they're letting us do this. You realize we're just a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. These are just straight up on the moon. What are the odds you let me touch the Genesis rock? Zero. Yesterday, we dug up a dinosaur fossil, so I'm an expert in this kind of stuff. Can I touch it? No. I tried. This material here is actually wow. lunar soil. <laughs> You're actually touching the moon right now. Oh, that's wild. So that tube has dirt from the moon. It has not been opened since it came back. And since you haven't checked in theory, there could be an alien. Yes. Well, it would be the first from the moon. Wait. <laughs> you guys heard that? And after we found out aliens were totally real, we headed to the stratosphere for our next job, where Carl and Nolan are going to fly a plane. I've never flown a plane before. We have no idea what we're doing. Welcome to the first day of flight training. I'm not joking. For the boys to somehow fly a real plane, all they have to do is land one time in this flight simulator. All right, here we have our throttle. Pulling it back makes it go slower, just like that. Oh, oh my God. And after Nolan crashed, ah! oh God. and crashed, oh God. and ah! crashed. You crashed the plane? He eventually did land successfully, which for whatever reason, gave him the keys to fly this real plane. Yo, I'm freaking out. Hey, if you can't do this, Nolan, please, for the love of God, let them know now. Oh, oh my God, I'm gonna fly a plane. Oh my God. All right, here we go, you ready to go? As ready as I'll ever be. Oh Approaching 60. Kind of wobbly, but uh, now just pull back a little bit. We're taking off! Hey. Oh my god! Your life is in my hand! He is literally controlling this entire thing. Yes, he is, all by himself. Everyone has never caused a crash, right? Uh, well. Watch this, I'm gonna turn right. No. Turn right! Oh, oh my god, we're sideways! I can't believe that I'm controlling this thing. Look, no hands! Stop! Oh, oh sweet Jesus! You bore all! Oh, I'm gonna burn you! We're gonna go over there in a minute. We're gonna go back and land. Oh my god, I forgot. That's the one thing that's always a challenge for people. All right, I'm descending. My mental health is descending also. This is the part I crashed in every time in the simulator. Oh god. Ah! We're gonna land right there on top of that runway. Oh my god! Wait, oh. we're too close, right? Keep, oh. it, keep it pointed right down the middle. Oh my god. Easy. Keep your hands on. Ground. You did it, man. I landed a plane. Oh my god. He said I couldn't do it, but we're still here. You didn't kill me. I was genuinely surprised that the job that pays $1 million a year is hand modeling. But only if you're one of the highest paid hand models in the world. She makes five times the average salary of a doctor by letting people take photos of her hands. And her resume is stacked. She's hand modeled for almost any brand you've ever heard of. Her hands are even insured for $1 million per hand. I can't. I just can't react to Mr. Beast. I'll let him do his thing first. I can't wait to see this in action. So to start us off, she examined our hands. I didn't know that today was going to be the day that I'd find new insecurities. Okay, so immediately I can see the nails need work. Of course. Agreed. These hands suck. Okay. Look how much hair is here compared to Carl. Can I get paid more for that? The skin texture might be better here with these two. Can you change me? I don't know if I can work miracles, but um, <laughs> I haven't seen your hands yet, Jimmy. Your hands like glow. That's crazy. Why are your hands so glossy? <laughs> I don't know. Are my finger structures good? Uh, yeah. No, they're very good actually. But again, we've got cuticle issues, skin issues here, but that can all be fixed. Our hands clearly needed work, so we had to prepare them to shoot, which was pretty easy for me and Carl. But for laser, 
Not so much. Oh, God. Bro, you can make a rug out of all that hair. <laughs> this hair's been with me my whole life. But you gotta do what you gotta do if you wanna make a million dollars. And now that my hands are no longer disgusting, we're gonna model for an actual magazine. And these photos are literally gonna be shown on billboards all across America to promote these watches. That's petrifying. Yeah, no, no pressure. Okay. I mean, the watch looks good. <laughs> I honestly thought this was gonna be easy, but we were actually horrible at this. It looks like the watch is on a snake. <laughs> Bro, this is so hard. Can I see the difference with you doing it? Oh! What? Unreal. The product looks better because her hand doesn't shake as much. But being a hand model isn't all about wearing nice watches. Sometimes you have to model weird things. Why are you squirming? Because I see a man holding a snake off camera. <laughs> Breathe, Carl, breathe. Put your other hand out here and kind of support his head. Yeah, of course I'll support. One final thing I need to throw in the mix is Immortals of Avium, the sponsor of this video. Just hold that right there. Okay, perfect. Now he's modeling the watch, a snake, and this game. Yo, look at that. That looks crazy. Immortals of Avium is a first-person magic shooter where you play as a battle mage named Jack trying to save the world, Carl. Can he save me? This time I need you to model the Xbox version of the game with the Scorpion. No way, bro. You want to grab between there and here. Is this actually safe for the animal? Yes. Perfect, perfect. Get it, get it, go, go, talk, talk, okay. and go, uh, and talk about the game. You can sling 25 different types of magic spells and unlock 80 different talents to customize your character to suit your playstyle. Carl, you think Immortals of Avium are going to love that photo? Immortals of Avium, I hope you love this. Just hold the scary animals, and then we get to join the NFL for our final job. The people who created Immortals of Avium also helped make the award winning campaigns of Halo, Call of Duty, and Dead Space. We love those campaigns. <gasps> oh, it's moving. And the coolest thing is, they put me in the game as a boss. And if you kill me in the game, you get more gold than any other boss the game gives you. Oh! Nice, no, I got you, I got you, just don't look. <laughs> Immortals of Avium is out now with a free trial on Xbox, as well as PS5, and there's a free demo available on Steam. I feel it under me! It's under my hand! We were doing such a bad job that we had the hand model step in to ensure the sponsor would approve of the photos. Click the link in the description if you want to play Immortals of Avium right now. I'm retiring as a hand model. And even though our photos weren't great, we still got them on billboards all across the country. And now it's finally time for the job that pays $10 million per year. That's right, I'm about to literally join the NFL. This is literally my dream. And if you think this is all fake, here I am signing a real contract to become a literal player for the Buccaneers worth $10 million. It might say we're not gonna pay it, but it at least says that dollar amount. No, no, focus on the dollar amount. <laughs> and now it's official. Congratulations. Damn. So for the next 48 hours, I'm officially a player. You are officially a player. I promise I won't let you down. I promise he will let you down. <laughs> By the end of my contract, I'm gonna be running out with the team on the field in front of 60,000 fans. The first g'day, step g'day. is weight training. It's Going on, guys. Let's go up. Let's go up. I don't actually think I'll be back soon. Struggle? Are you a winner or are you a falcon? Easy. Yeah. I've noticed they yell at you a lot when you're an NFL player. Can you set it to whatever the strongest player in your team does? I'm gonna see if I can do one. He can do 12 of these? Holy crap! He's not a normal human. Uh, I would hate to be hit by him. One more. Four, yeah. four. Good boy. Why is the NFL so hard? Ugh. How does this compare to their typical workouts? Pretty pathetic. Hopefully the lightheadedness goes away. It will. You get used to it. <laughs> okay. Up next was my first practice at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers training facility. So naturally, I met my coach. Oh, Mr. Beast. How's it going? How you doing? Good. Good. And my new teammates. Nice to meet you, man. My name's Shaq. My kids love you. I love your videos. Oh, really? The candy bars, the Carl gummies. Are Y'all ready? <laughs> And my new teammates couldn't believe I actually signed with the team, so I showed them my contract to prove it. Is this the same one you guys signed? I think you got more money than me, though. <laughs> yeah. that, but, but if you read, it says, unless it's canceled in 48 hours, we're still going to cancel. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at that. They're coming straight in. Trust me. I've got... Yeah, he's getting sure. hey, you're to I know, thank you. Okay. These guys make us look like children. They're so big. Look at the size comparison. <laughs> I'll be honest, I've never played football before. So they threw me on as kicker, which oh, I was terrible at. Mr. Beast, we need you out. We gotta get ready for tomorrow. You're right, you're right, you're right. I'll keep it. And since I've never played quarterback before either, uh, hi. I just threw one up as far as I could. Oh! Oh! Touchdown! In case you didn't know, the team I just joined is the same team Tom Brady won the Super Bowl with. So I thought it'd be funny to surprise him. Oh, we got him, Tom! Oh, I almost got hit. TB, what's up, baby? What's up, TB? What's up, bro? 
I have a friend here who might literally die of happiness if you no, say hi to him. You can't do this to me. You yes, can't do this to me. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. After that, our practice just evolved into shenanigans. I, ah, little man. Oh, oh, three. Too small. Yeah. You can Imagine. go back to Bill. Yeah, right, guys. Let's go. Some people still had some questions about my team. <laughs> so afterwards, the Bucks set up a press conference for me. We obviously have a big game. I'm expecting yeah, it's very okay, serious man. questions only. Is this just a publicity gonna, um, Why are you really here? To make the best video possible. Yes, it's a publicity I'm going to bring that down, I, I think. I'm not an NFL player. Jimmy, how does it feel being on the new team? It feels great. To be honest, they've Jimmy. accepted me way more than Calm I Calm Jimmy down, down a little bit. Uh, we'll bring us uh, back over into and over another scene. Um, I went to go get measured. Six foot four. four and a half. Six four and a half. Carl, you're six five. I'm six five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These measurements yeah, it's probably about so that my gear and my uniform are all there we go. That's all we want. <laughs> this actually looks so good. There we go. And now that I'm suited up, it's time for the official game day. I still don't know why they're letting me do this, yeah. but hey, thanks, Box. What happened? They let me join the team? Yeah. That's my first I need to block that out. Jimmy's about to come out any second now. They said if you get up by 100, I can play a play. Do me a favor and get up super high. It's his first game and probably his last. Definitely his last. How is this happening? What's happening here? Oh, there. Okay. And since this is the only NFL game I'll ever be a part of, the team actually let me lead them out the tunnel. Let's go, boys. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You gotta admit. Like, that's... You gotta love Jimmy for, it. like, what he's done. Pretty amazing. No, he's not. Let's go, boys! I won't let you guys down, even though I probably won't get played down. America. Let's play football! America. That is pretty they intense, huh? The Buccaneers for making me an official NFL player. It's honestly a good thing I didn't play because if they hit me, I probably would have died. And I thought it was all over there until the Falcons made fun of me on Twitter. So in retaliation, I'm going to nuke their stadium. Uh, Jimmy, you do a really good channel. That's all I can say, man. Like, he's he's done well for a reason, right? Uh, we're gonna just uh, watch a little bit of murder mystery. Let's yeah, see what's going on here, right? This is the kind of shit I like to watch, so I'm just gonna put it on. That chapter, Mikey from that chapter is amazing. I think he's hilarious. I tried to kill my cousin once to feel good. Oh, hold on. Let's Bring it in. Hey you and welcome. I started watching this one the other night, but video. we are off to Louisiana, down to Baton Rouge Ooh. to be specific. And and you Come know on. what? After like researching into this story, it's kind of made my bucket list of places I do not want to go. This is about as brutal a story and character that I've that I've come across. He makes you know, the, the list one of sec. top ten evil scary bastards. So look forward to that. Uh, please subscribe to see new videos every week. Now, let's give it a go. That's better. I can't watch this sort of shit in the light. That's weird. So you know what, there's a lot in this one, so I guess we kind of got to go back to the very, very beginning. And that is the 24th of June, 1962, when Yvonne and Norman Gillis, they welcomed a son, Sean Vincent Gillis, into the world. This must be the, the asshole. Yeah. This was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And what do we oh. know about Baton Rouge? Well, if one of my stories takes place there, you won't be learning much good about it. But hey, it's the capital of the state, and its name means Red Stick, which could very much be taken <laughs> Now, Norman didn't really, didn't really stick around too long. He left his son Red with Stick, Yvonne okay. to be raised by her and her parents, which probably a good thing. He was like a bit of a, you know, a bit of... Yeah, he was. Well, I mean, one thing he did when he was there before was he? the kind of eighty five thousands was held a gun to his baby Sean's to Sean's head. So it's probably a good thing Norman didn't stick around too long. A severe alcoholic with numerous mental health issues, which led him to frequently have breaks from reality. Mm. His son isn't going to be much better. All righty then. Yvonne oh come on, don't blame struggling me. Struggling between a full time job at a local TV don't station and son. being a mother to Sean. She really did adore Sean and did everything oh, she could to provide a good life for him. 
See, despite her best attempts at trying to, you know, positively, you know, guide Sean, even at 10 years old, he was able to bully in the neighborhood. Um, he's real kind of like a little shit is probably the best way to put it. Things won't go up from here. See, being a bully was something that would follow Sean throughout his entire life. And, you know, as a kid, him and his two best friends, they, they loved watching and reenacting satanic rituals, which on one hand is like, Hell yeah. on the other <laughs> hand is like it's probably not a good thing. If anyone knows that uh, chapter of Mikey, uh, he's um he's fantastic with his um. I tried to kill my cousin once to feel her. His little little meme bits. Oh, oh, what? Oh, what? Well, Did I just thing. sorry. What? Did I? Just... What? About... I tried to kill my cousin once to feel her breasts off. For that reason. Oh, oh, about twelve. The thing. video is a bit quiet there, bruv. What about funeral homes? Uh, funeral homes. This will go back to the childhood. I spent a lot of time at my grandmother at a funeral home right across the street. Let me just and check my out. Yeah. We would do morbid things like sleep in the coffins. A lot of people can't believe that, but we do it. Regardless of his dark tendencies, it wasn't think... until shortly before he would turn 18 years old. I probably need to get used to sort of pausing if I want to react and say something in this sort of shit as well. Like, but that's. It was more twisted than I expected. Getting someone to feel their breasts up. It's like, what the fuck? But hopefully the volume's better now. ...years old, in 1980, that Sean had his first official run-in with the law. Minor <laughs> stuff, but you know, uh, you got the, got the gold snowball. After high school, Sean went directly into the workforce. Now, he didn't have any kind of plans of what he wanted to do for his life, so he ended up working at a 7-Eleven. But working... No, it wasn't really for him, it wasn't really kind of his cup of tea, so essentially over the next few months he would bounce around various jobs, working in retail, convenience stores, and, and you know, faffing about, faffing about for the best part. See, Sean really enjoyed spending time with his, you know, clackety clackety computer, and you know, back then, that the internet was kind of just newly born, it was only starting to take to off, off I was gonna go to the on it, pretty much but... only stuff for government officials, Star Wars, and Star Trek lovers, and... Good old porn. What more do you need? Well, see, Sean, he kind of yes. like, whoop, fell down a bit of a rabbit hole as uh, what he liked to kind of have a goo at became, <laughs> you know, increasingly more and more extreme, uh, disturbing. And Sean really, really kind of found what, you know, kind of set his burner off. And that was blood. Lots and lots of blood. So pretty soon you got some good old illegal territory. And as I said, yeah, what got his blood flowing was literally blood. You ever heard of Walter Mitty? Secret Life of Walter Mitty. That's the life I have been leading for about the past eight years. Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I've seen the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I'm not actually familiar with it. Jekyll. Is that, oh, Jekyll and Hyde. Is that something to do with Jekyll and Hyde? I, I was about to Google it. I fucking... By the time I was 30 something, I was well into it. There was no point of return. One thing happened, then another thing happened. No. Sean spent much of the next decade, until his early 30s, squirreled away in his bedroom next to his computer screen. But in 1994, Sean's life changed when he was introduced to me. a woman named Terry Lemoyne, and the two began dating. The relationship had almost not happened at all, as after their first date, the two got in a heated argument, which ended with Terry slapping him across the face. What happened then? Sort of funny. So after taking a shot to the kisser, Sean began to cry. Terry took pity on him and promised, you know, uh, she would never be violent again and fine, I'll go at another date, would you just stop crying? Yeah, I mean, it worked. So kind of sort of things went well for a bit. I mean, it's, it's a relationship. It started with a slap to the face, so. But soon Terry became concerned wait, wait, with Sean's it. growing obsession with, um, you know, said internet. Sean began to spend his evenings while Terry was at work. David, welcome to the stream. Just doing a little bit of reacting. I'll just, uh, this is the kind of stuff I like to watch at this night, time of night. Um... I didn't really want to play any games tonight, so uh, just sort of watching a little bit of a murder mystery together. Um, I sort of lost a little bit with that oi oi. But welcome. Great to have you. It worked. So kind of sort of things went well for a bit. I mean, it's, it's a relationship. It started with a slap to the face, so. But soon Terry became concerned with Sean's growing obsession with, um, you know, said internet. Sean began to spend his evenings while Terry was at work cruising around town for prostitutes and watching women. <laughs> Obviously, Terry had no idea about any of it. 
And then what started was this kind of shitty behavior soon escalated beyond. Imagine that if that's your life, you just start going around looking for husties at night, and you got a missus at home, and that's your thing that you start doing. I don't know. At that point in my head, if I was to do that, I'd be going, "I need help." A sane person's comprehension. Help. On March twenty first, nineteen ninety four, the floodgates burst open and poured out onto eighty one year old Anne Bryan. She was a stranger and his intention had been to sexually assault the frail and vulnerable 81-year-old woman. But when Anne screamed for help... You know, this might sound crass as well, but that's what I've never understood, is like a lot of sexual assaults are around old women. And uh, I've talked to my wife about this as well. It's not about attractiveness or sexual desire. It's about control. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, it, it, You're not really like out there to get your rocks off and find this person and go, oh. unless, I don't know, he instantly changed his intentions and he cut her throat. He then proceeded to stab her close to 50 times. Anne had simply left her door unlocked at the assisted living facility and the shocking murder of Anne Bryan absolutely rocked the Baton Rouge area. You can make all the jokes you want about how he's the nerdiest looking guy ever and how that <laughs> yeah. trash should not be left around children. And guess what? You'd be right. Shortly after he brutally murdered Anne, Brian, Sean, and Terry, they moved in together. This was in 1995, and he wouldn't, in fact, uh, kill again for another five years. Five years is like a pretty long cooling off. It's a funny thing, like, that moustache shouldn't be around children, but he didn't kill children. But yeah, you wouldn't let that guy be your kid. Appeared for how no way. violent it was, but, um, go go. Sean will make up for it, so... <laughs> Between Sorry, January 14th, 19... I, I, I don't know why I enjoy watching this shit. I think it's the dark side of me, but I haven't been having a great time all the time in my head sometimes. So to watch how bad other things really are, and it's like, it just gives you confidence sometimes. It's like all the weird things I've ever thought. I'm not that crazy. In to February 26th, 2004, Sean went into full-on serial killer mode, committing another Fuck seven Sean. brutal murders. The five-year reign of terror started with 29-year-old Katrin Ann Hall. Sean had once again begun cruising the streets of Baton Rouge. Whether consciously or not, he was stalking the crowds for another victim. Just like Anne, Brian Katrin Hall had no prior connection to Gillis. They'd never even crossed paths before. Katrin's body was later found dumped in a construction site and you know, he'd lured her into his car with the old, you know, offer of business. Business being murder. Just like with Anne, he brutally and repeatedly stabbed her 16 times while she was alive, another 20 after she was dead. Then he treated himself, he had a little, he had a little treat. He took her, he took her eyelids, That's he, he chopped off her eyelids Ooh. in the back pocket. That's he then posed one. her body at that construction site near a sign that read, Dead End. Which <laughs> he, he probably was laughing all the way home about. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that guy had a fucking sense of humor. <laughs> Cutting off someone's eyelids is like a suggestion that you'll never be able to sleep again. You know, like you'll never, you have to be awake. That's a, a scary thought. Could you imagine if you're, oh no, I don't want to, yeah. Imagine being alive and having them cut off and not being able to close your eyes. <gasps> Ooh. I don't know what happens then. I think your eyes are probably be able to close from the oh yuck people yeah no nah. let's, let's get back to Calvin. it's if i love you the mattress cover love has changed you. my life and here is why love i adjust how, how did that account begin did you ever then with Catherine before i've seen Catherine before just a chance in hell ships in the night how long did you drive with her in the week? Oh. Tell me, you know what it was to Driving to the end of the world. Any more you help us clear, it, it can't hurt you. It cannot possibly hurt you anymore. 
I love these interrogation tactics when people start getting really friendly with the uh, suspect. It's like, oh, you know. We add for a murder documentary. Yes. Yeah, there was always a weird add on. Of course, he did put them to sleep. <laughs> this, this, uh, I can see how this reactor, if I watch murder stuff, this reactor is going to bring a lot of weird things in, but I like it. I like it. We're going to do it. Um, this is the kind of stuff I do watch at this time of night. I watch that chapter. I like, I will like to watch Mr. Ball and, um, you know, I like watching comedy though. I was watching Jim Brewer earlier. Um, I think, you know, his latest special, we should probably just react to some of that as well. There was some really good stuff in that. Um, I just, I like dark shit though. I like to lighten up, but I like dark shit. Well, I was wondering. Somehow it helps you sleep. It's just good. Now, Sean wasn't exactly a mastermind criminal. He left plenty of DNA evidence behind, including, like, there was a pubic hair found right, right beside her mouth, which... <laughs> and, like, the, oh, he abused... <laughs> How'd that get there? I have no idea. <laughs> Look at his face. How'd that get there? He used her after she was dead. Oh, there was DNA no, that, under her that, okay, okay, now, if you're talking about necrophilia, that made me... Ah, whatever. I'm laughing at shit. Then she'd, she'd fought him off, but they had nothing on file to match it to. Sean wasn't on their files at all yet, so they had his DNA, but nothing to say. Who is he? Sean's next victim was 52-year-old Hardy Schmidt. Sean had Did spotted Hardy the while she was out jogging and Netflix? began stalking her. Then, roughly... Uh, no, I haven't seen Night Stalker on Netflix. Uh, I think... God, actually, I think I started watching it. I get really distracted with Netflix because I find they're not quick enough. I think that's why I like this, that chapter and stuff like Mr. Ballin. It's like 20 minutes or even like half an hour with like three different stories in it. But you watch something on Netflix and it goes for four or five hours and it's padded out with all these little scenes of, you know, like um, uh, just that little background music and a bit of B-roll. And then someone talking in the background about something that didn't really matter to her. And then it just slowly, slowly moves on. I really struggle with the Netflix murder then documentary stuff should. now. Um, but I will check it out. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll take it off your recommendation 100%. Um, but I've been struggling with watching those. Uh, the, these sorts of these Very YouTubers intriguing are changing and interesting. What, which uh, case is it about, The Night Stalker? I can, I can Dark fucking it. shit. Dark fucking shit. Hold on. <laughs> Three weeks it's, later, he's... Just, what's the night still got? Would you, we can check it out if we want to for just a sec. Um, who, who's it? Oh, Richard Ramirez. Uh, okay. Yeah, and he did like a bunch of... Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, nah. I know of the one. Um, how many Richard Ramirez. Have? Yeah, Richard Ramirez, I'm seeing it. How many episodes is it? I reckon I've seen one or two episodes and not watched the last couple. But I'm going to watch the rest of that tonight. Um, I mean, it's something we could watch together, I guess. But I, I feel a short form of YouTube is a bit better for this sort of thing. But like, and, and like, I am struggling to watch some of those. So yeah, definitely any advice on the good ones, that'd be great because I often put something on YouTube, uh, on Netflix, and then kind of go, oh, I'm not sure if I want to watch this, and then just put a comedy special on, which I end up finding on YouTube half the time as well. It's YouTube's really becoming a power in the streaming service because like all the, all the comedians are, are doing their specials on YouTube just to make it for themselves instead of selling it to a, a production company. So um, yeah, I'm sticking to YouTube way too much. So Weird. Out. But I will check it out. This Thank time you. Got Thank you. It left you me creeped her. out for a few days. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh no, I think I've seen like the start of it. Like the name Richard Ramirez is very, very familiar. And like I said before, I even saw it, it said fifteen plus victims. I was like, there's a bunch that he did as well. And then I looked at it, I was like, ah, yeah, no, <clears throat> that is a dark character as far as I remember. Maybe we'll watch a quick one on him uh, after this, even. Remind me, we'll queue it up. Off the road, hitting her. She went flying into YouTube a one. ditch. Sean then got out. She was Ooh. screaming on the ground, my back. 
my back. As you can imagine, Sean simply walked over the to her and said, funny for a Lady, while. your back is the least of your problems now. He fastened the zip tie suffocatingly tight around her neck, assaulted her, let her die, and threw her into the trunk I was running of his through car. the house. Sean's fourth Watch victim was 36-year-old like Joyce Mr. Williams. Oh, who's Mr. Cruel? Yeah, I don't like it when the dark starts affecting you. That's a tough, that's a tough day. Um. <laughs> All the family stuff. What was that movie? Um. Oh, God. I'm not even going to go and find it. Uh, the Happening. I don't know. There, there, there was something. There was something of the the something. Uh, and it involved, like, somebody hearing of this during the night and, and when they're... You know, and that was always, it was this, that this uh, ghost or, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, at the end of the night, um, my wife had to go to the toilet. We were getting ready for bed and I just crept up outside the toilet window, the toilet door. And I just went, and she fucking lost it. It was so brilliant. Um, yeah, I don't get that scared from scary films or anything, so I, I kind of find them quite comical most of the time. Um, I think that's why I, I find this relaxing. I, it, I, I'm not an ill-minded person. I don't, you know, I don't like murder or anything, but I find it relaxing to see other people's problems. <laughs> Sean had picked her up working the streets in Scotlandville, and her body was later found when hunters oh, stumbled the family. across. Yeah, you're right. The family's probably a good one to look at too. That's pretty creepy. That's real creepy. The remains. Next That's game, 52-year-old yeah. Lillian Robson killed in January 2000. Which the was delay of the right stream the is time killing Joyce me. Williams' body was found. In terms of when you're commenting and I'll be able to hear it, is that what you mean? Like, I'm not sure how to actually like tighten that up at the moment, um, or is it the delay of my Looks like that's working okay. But yeah, the um the voice of chat is not gonna be instant. I I uh, I don't think there's any Yep. I don't think there's any way I can sort of speed it up either. Um chat's fade. It's just the way I've got it set up. I'm using a third party app to try and get the voice of text. Um, I could I could turn it off and just actually watch your comments. We would comment and it would come up after you've finished the YouTube video. I could just look at the comments instead. I can just pull comments up and get uh, text to speech off. Um, we just usually do that because I'm playing a game, I'm distracted, but I can, hold on, where's, uh, where's my dashboard? Uh, go live, there's already a live going, click on that, hit on chat, and, so I can, nah, the text to speech is funny. Keep it on. That's, the delay isn't too bad, because on my studio, that just came through very quickly. When you commented on YouTube, it came through at the same time as speech chat. So I don't know if there's... Maybe I need to keep... Oogla Boogla, see? Okay, now Oogla it's... Oogla Boogla. See? Yeah, okay, so it takes a bit of time. It's not too much, though. That's not as bad. I thought it... I, I felt like it was 20 seconds before or so. Um, all right, let's get on with this story, but, uh, um, and we'll try and fix that delay thing. We'll try and get it sorted. is exactly how I look at it. Where you going? I called my weapon that sometimes, the objectifier. The objectifier. Because it would turn them from a woman to Ooh. the object that I would then deal with. It's I'm just our attention span, come and bro. The Tristan company you used. That's Hello. exactly the way I looked at it. Goldfish. What was that? What did you say? And would it surprise you? Sorry, what would you say? The control of another being's limbs. Oh, this is disturbing as is fuck. It. So, it's, 
Uh. Now, despite having several very brutal, high-profile murders, which kind of had a very similar MO, none of them were actually linked at this point. The victims were all kind of varied. Some were sex workers, some were, some were not sex workers. So even the FBI profilers had a hard... Why is it always sex workers? They have life hard enough. The accent is not where it's at. We need Miguel and Beaches. Miguel and Beaches. Uh, but why, honestly, sex workers? They have life hard enough. Why would you... And... Like, they just fucked you. Why would you kill them? Sad fucking people, man. Time trying to match... Getting the red, red string out, right? And trying to mash them all together. Sean's sixth victim was another sex worker named Marilyn Nevels, 38. Of course it was. And that was in late October 2000. What's a sex worker? It was kind of like, you know, well... E-L-I-5. I'm not going to ELI-5 that. My wife's coming into the way. It's someone that put your groceries in the bag at Tesco's. What's up? Brad plays. Please, Brad says what a sex worker is. Uh... uh <sighs> That's a Tesco worker, isn't it? Um, how would you explain like I'm fine? E L I eighteen. E L I eighteen, yeah, a whore that f gets fucked for money. Um, someone that had daddy issues, didn't grow up in a great environment, and um, decided that that was the best way that she could make money because one, she enjoys getting fucked, and two, um, it gets her money. And nice things. And she could have multiple different people that give her that money. Um, in this current day and age, at 2023, you can have a sugar daddy or multiple sugar daddies if you want to be a sugar baby. And you could just get your college paid for by sucking dick. But I can't eat a life five. I hope that makes sense. Drug habits. Drug habits are good. I mean, bad. Bad. I just pick it up. Smack, smack, smack. So she quit fighting. Sean, wow. by this time, had found his little MO, his little, you know, his little routine that worked really well. He picked her up, drove her off, put his, a bead to shit out of her, put his zip tie around her neck, suffocated her to death. It's mainly Did the environment they she grow up in. Sliced, gouged. It her mostly bike is, dude, hold. honestly. So you have know, all these Daddy brutal murders, real. really, really graphic stuff. We are all in, in the same area, relatively close. See, the problem was that the police were really kind of shitting themselves about was that there was actually another serial killer active in the area at the same time. Derek Todd Lee. Pace was found Usually stabbed they to death get in the Charlotte Avenue home. Their own she had family. just moved from Stanford Avenue. The 22-year-old yeah, lived just three doors thing. down it's from their screen. It's a real unfortunate thing. It's like, you know, you, you, I, I sort of mentioned about, you know, like, I guess the people that um, get out of high school, it's get on a bit of crack really. and don't really do much. But there are, yeah, you know, and it, it happens young. You know, like there was that, um, another Netflix special that I haven't actually watched and it had a lot of backlash, or was it on Prime? But they were, like, there was an investigator that was talking about sex trafficking because he's been trying to help people for a long time. But there was a whole group of people that acted like it was glorifying something, but it wasn't. It was just telling the truth of how fucking bad this is and that there's teenage traffic all the time. Um, and it's crazy how, you know, like the world and the media will start like to come down on that in a weird way. It's like, where's that message coming from? Because people in high places like doing that. A la Ex Epstein. I mean, like, it's, yeah. Who's on his fucking list? Who's in his book? We don't know. It's been all redacted. That's some crazy shit. Year old was found strangled in her home eight months before Pace's murder. He had murdered at least seven women and had a very similar MO to Sean. So things were very we scary at this time. We had a case a very long time ago. 
Sean remained in the shadows and actually began keeping here. tabs on his competitor, Lee. He didn't know Lee's identity at first, just that there was another serial killer out there, and he used the internet to follow articles and reports about the latest killing of the man the press dubbed the Baton Rouge Serial Killer, leading to Sean Vincent Gillis's name of the other Baton Rouge Serial Killer. There's so many, you need, you need to have an other one. Later, when both arrested and captured on Sean's computer, they would find a folder DTL, which means... Derek Toddley! Sorry, I was thinking of something else. So not only was Sean playing like a cat and mouse game with the police, he was playing... Am I missing something here? What's DTL mean? I get what DTF means. Killer. Leading to Sean Vincent Gillis's name of the other Baton Rouge serial killer. There's so, so many, killers. you need you need to have an other one. Later, when both arrested and captured on Sean's computer, they would find a folder. A girl DTL, that was bought for 10.000 euros from her family, and the pimp said that she needed to work until she fills the 10.000 euros that he paid for her. And she did after many years. Oh, wow. Um... I bet her family felt like shit when she finally paid it. <laughs> I hope she came back after them and fucking put them through the courts. The fucking cunt. Like, that's horrible. You know, like, they probably did that thinking, oh, yeah, don't have to worry about it and we get money. And who could do that to your children? I don't know. I don't want to comment on that. That's Charlie, fun. sorry, I was thinking of something else. So I'm now still trying to work out what DTL meant. And the end... The pimp sold her to someone else for another 10 grand. Oh! And the cycle started again. Promises. Promises in that world. Ooh, that's scary. Then they're not, yeah. I'm going to jump up and get something to eat. It was Sean playing um, like a cat and mouse game with off. the police. He was playing with another serial killer too. I wonder if they crossed paths. Just out there murdering them at the same time. I'm still here, I'm just... Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna leave the cam on, because... Just let me get something to eat if you want. If you're that... Gillis realistic. would return to killing on October 9th, 2003, with the brutal murder of 45-year-old Johnny Mae Williams. However, what made her different is that, unlike all the other previous victims, Sean actually knew her. He was friends with her for like 10 years before he killed her, which is very rare for serial killers to murder people they're close with. Serial killers will usually only go after strangers or people they only kind of sort of know. But didn't stop Sean. He did the same, picked her up in his car, drove her out to a rural spot, suffocated her, Turn it into stabbed a the shit out of her, left her there. Yeah, I know right from wrong as well as you do. I know you do. I'll put I could my never do a mukbang. I, I couldn't do a mukbang, dude. No way. It fuzzes out. I can't. I've got a stomach. And control. it's really don't, not that don't I don't do know it. it anymore. It's like I can eat. It doesn't matter I, anymore. You know what? I'm gonna turn reverse. headphones on. It's I'll probably end up there. snoring at the end I of the night. God. There you go. go we can do that one, right? Control it. It's it's beyond my control at the moment. I'm a homicidal maniac. I don't mean to be. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Yeah! Then you're in the bag. Eat a sandwich.
It was better when the multiple men entered the room. Binge every episode of the Amazing Race Celebrity Edition. Crying out loud, I want a gold logie. I need something to vomit and get up. Wait, is that rocket up? <laughs> the Amazing Race Celebrity Edition, streaming now on Ten Play. Less than five months after killing Williams, Sean committed his eighth and final. Murder. I'll download this one. Another sex worker, this time a stranger to him, named Donna Bennett Johnston. Johnston was 43 years old on February 26, 2004, when Gillis Can ran into her in the this, street. Brad. She was very drunk when he met her, Hero so getting Wars. her into his car was, was not really a problem. And then, once again, rural location out in the bayous. Unfortunately, you do know the rest. This time he strangled Johnston to death using an electrical cable he twisted around her neck. Once she was dead, he used a knife to slash both of Johnston's breasts and cut off her left nipple. He then gouged a tattoo from her right thigh and cut her left arm off at the elbow. Then, after removing her left arm, he took it with him and, um, you know, he wanted it to use as a... Another one you could watch. Yeah. He would later confess the to detectives one. about Donna that he, he tried a little cannibalism, just, just, a, just a smidge, just a smidge. Um, but he said he didn't like it. Didn't like it. He said he, human we fat Hero was Wars disgusting and he couldn't understand sure. why others would do it. I don't think you need to try human to have that same thought. Pictures. Of the leg, you know, and I literally held and stretched the skin. Like I said, I've tried to figure out what the hell this was a tattoo of. So after making the initial incision in the leg, I just cut a box around it. Then I find out how much human fat sticks to the back of skin. Okay, because getting it off of there was easier thought of than done. And at that point, you know, I looked at it, went with it, played with it, you know, lick it, um, even tasted the fat. This was where I tried a little cannibalism. Okay, um, human fat does not taste good. I don't advise it. I, I don't see how anything would survive off of it. Um, Two months later, authorities were able to match a tire print left at the scene where Johnston's body was found, matching it to Gillis's white Chevrolet Cavalier. Now, there was a number of people in the Baton Rouge area that drove Chevy Cavaliers, so the police went to every single one they could track down. Sean Gillis was number 26 on that list, and he voluntarily gave the police his DNA. Another thing which pops up from time to time with serial killers is a desire to be caught. Maybe that's why he gave it voluntarily. He must have known Look that it would eventually it. be traced Couldn't to the other victims. Living on it. And that, that tire print was the break they needed. They got him into custody, and then once he was in custody, DNA, my friend. And then they were like, oh, shit. they had no idea when they actually arrested him for Don and Johnson's murder, that he would his DNA would show up being matched to a shitload of other murders. So that must have been a, quite a surprise, but a good one, I think. Do you know why we're talking? We're talking because you had some tire tracks that possibly came from my car there. And from those tracks, it appears she was unloaded from that vehicle. Why belong? And thrown into that canal. She was not unloaded from my vehicle. When investigators searched Gillis' home, they found a bonanza of evidence, including the photographs he'd taken of bodies. On the computers, detectives discovered several files and folders created by Gillis, including one folder named Best of Snuff, Beheadings and Hangings, and one file titled Russian Necrophilia. So yeah, Gillis was pretty fucked. And that was even before they put him in the interview room and he, you know, gave him a cup of coffee and said, listen, what's the crack? Yapped away. You couldn't shut him up. You could not shut Sean Vincent Gillis up. Like so. The town will be as interesting as Charlie is. 
Well, I'll leave that to the experts. At what point did, uh, did these women start to piss you off? start to piss me off. you believe me if I say no point? Sure, I believe you. I believe you can get done. I don't think you're a straight shooter. I'm just comfortable with it. It's a little monster coming in. Pardon? It's the word monster coming in. Have you discussed any of this with your wife? No. As soon as I told him, no. I fought them. Okay. I mean, there's, there's just so long you can fight something. Okay. Before it's just overwhelming. It's like, it's like the cookie jar again. I'll use that analogy. You're looking at it. You know you can't go into the cookie jar. You've been told don't go into the cookie jar. You probably won't go into the cookie jar if you're a good kid. Yeah. Which I was literally was a sick kid obviously but good and in this instance sooner or later the hand goes into the cookie jar it just the, the, it just overwhelms you after a while the whole time monster again, energy drink um, proven it fucks you up tempted, but nothing until then i uh, just lost control of it mm. No lawyer, no pleading to fifth for sick O'Shawn. Nope. Once he popped, he literally could not stop. They could not shut him up. He would just go on and on and on. And, and as long as, you know, he was incriminating himself, the police weren't going to stop him. I was methodical in the way that I would get my bill. I was Coffee methodical monster. in a lot of things. But when it came down to the actual, it was Helter Skelter. I mean, was, was there any kind of plan that you had worked out in your mind well this one really i'm gonna say, say as far as, as to the actual but as far as we doing yeah. killing that was pretty much it was uh the, as far as the any of the ritualistic acts as y'all put it as it's defined there's nothing uh, nothing meticulous like that i mean literally it was pretty much slash slash don't be forget later sean wrote in a letter to a friend I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I was in a real bad place. I was pure evil that night. He's referring to the night he killed Donna Johnston, his final victim. No love, no compassion, oh, no faith, no mercy, no hope. In all, Sean faced charges in seven of his eight murders. Officially, William Robinson's murder is still being investigated, even though it's everybody's full sure that it was Sean Gillis. Sean actually pled not guilty, and he tried to file motions to suppress his earlier confession and the validity of the DNA swab. Both were denied, and Sean was forced to change his plea. He narrowly avoided the death penalty when the jury were deadlocked on the decision, and Sean remains in protective segregation at Louisiana Penitentiary, also known as Angola. Sean's live-in girlfriend, by the way, convenience store manager Terry Lemoyne, she had no idea over the years and years they were together that he was secretly a serial killer. She once or twice had suspicions that something was up, but she simply thought he was having an affair. One time she even got in his car and smelled something foul. He said that he had hit an animal. All the while, there was a dead body in the Brad trunk. Shave now she would say up until too. the day the police kicked in her door to arrest Sean, she couldn't believe, you know, he was a serial killer. After all, when they first met and she slapped him, he started to cry so she couldn't comprehend him ever being violent towards women. How wrong she was. She continued to live in the house they shared in Baton Rouge until recently enough, though every Halloween the house would be vandalized. She then moved to Alabama. Now, unbelievably, Derek Toddley wasn't Sean's only competitor. There was another man adding to the death toll of women in Baton Rouge at the very same time as both Gillis and Lee, Jeffrey Lee Guillory. Between the tree killers, they are taught to have killed 36 women in the Baton Rouge area over a 12 year period. And that is what makes Baton Rouge the serial killer capital of America. So, congratulations!
thank you so much for watching. It means, it means so much to me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I mean, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, here, listen, as, as always, you know, if you would like to see extra videos, early videos, all that, please check out the That Chapter Patreon for two bucks a month to get up. All that kind of stuff. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and you know the rest. But until, you know, the next video, which will be up in uh, a couple of days, please take care of each other and, and yourself. Yeah, it. take care for each other and all that. Mikey out. Um, sorry about that. I had a little distraction at some point in that, but I was listening in the background. He's a disturbing, uh, weird person. Um, I don't think we want to go through more than that chapter, or do, or do we? Uh, I didn't get any suggestions. I thought we'd get some suggestions for... Um, some extra clips uh, during that, but let's just see what Mr. Bourne's been doing. He's been doing his podcast more, which is shitty because um, his videos are better than his podcast. Like, his podcast is just like lame as hell. Nah, not interested in that. Uh. This is a pretty good set. Um, country boy. Let's have a little giggle. Fuck it. This lady is special. We'll go back a little bit so you can get the hint of what he's like. He's like part of your family. If you don't know Jim Brewer, uh, but you did watch Half Baked when you were stoned when you were younger, then you do know Jim Brewer. Um, he's that guy, but he's sober. He's completely sober these days. Um, he's a fantastic guy. Emily, there's no way you would allow this to happen. There's no way I'm letting my Uncle Lenny just, like, don't let him speak. Don't, he's on the stage. I'm not sure what he's talking about, but we're just going to set it up. I don't want to go from right to start. Just show him where the podium is, please. I'm going to get to the next, next bit. He's on crack. No. So there's a bit. Head. Sitcom for the rest. Of uh, you know what? We're probably just gonna have to go from the start. <laughs> probably just gonna have to see what, what we can do here. <laughs> These guys are all still in Jones Beach, the whole... See, I didn't get this, kid. that's why I was skipping it. He's talking about, like, local places. You have to admit, even if you're like, I don't care, as long as it's not, you know who. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is very cool stuff. Like... That was like a demonic, like the devil came out and just whoever like, we're going to make people hate Donald Trump. Hate. Get him. I hate Donald Trump. He's a racist. He's a dead <laughs> White supremacist. He's a insurrectionist. He's a, he, they lynch people. I saw the news channels. I saw them saying, he's racist, he's sexist. He's... You would just wake up to pee he's in the middle of the night. He hates like Mexicans, he and he... he says they're rapists, and he hates black people. And he... What? They had, remember the Women's March? We're gonna march! Oh, I think we just Starting got demonetized with a page pretty quickly. Can be overwhelming. Grammarly gives you a head start. Simply type a prompt to... The work mob, huh? Fascinating how your common sense disappears. <laughs> oh, I hate 
human being and because you hate you're accepting come on man come on come on if this listen man if, if this was like part of your family there's no way you would allow this to happen. There's no way I'm letting my Uncle Lenny just like, don't let him speak. Don't, he's on the stage. But to let that sit up happen. Just show him where the podium Sorry. is, please. Like, is someone emotionally attached to that? HTTPS colon double forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark B equals sign by zero. She's on crack, do you understand that? It's not like you want him to be on crack, no one, no one, he's on crack. Think about it, this is some drug lord stuff, think about it. Think about it, he got caught bribing. <laughs> if you don't give me money, you can't talk to my father. Where's that Asian whore? How much? As long as he's not him. Blind <laughs> <laughs> oh, emotions. That ain't the sitcom for the rest of the world. <laughs> you don't, you don't think, let's just, let's pretend you're in China. You don't think there's people watching China go, oh my God. He saw a crack and they no blink. They arrest all the guys. <laughs> <laughs> on Ukraine and they're ha, 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 and we send in money want to fight <laughs> I love this show I love this show <laughs> on that note I keep telling my wife to get off TikTok because it's just a Chinese Communist Party invading us and trying to make you dumber and dumber. She does come out with comments to me, like, at times, um, like, you've got ADHD. So it shows me some videos. Um, it's it's quite interesting. I kind of go, fuck yeah. The past couple of years, it's been like, I'm still triggered by the fact it's on TikTok. I'm like, mm, get this off my fucking network. But whatever. Cool. Interesting. Recently came out with, um, God, what is it? I can't remember the term now. Apparently I'm, um, I'll have to ask her. Oh, but it's something else that I am as well. It's like, did you get this from TikTok? Because I swear to God, you're not a doctor. I'm going to doctors. I can get my diagnosis, and I'd prefer if my wife doesn't diagnose me. Um, but yeah, China's a, a, a strong power at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, that was supposed to go way better because I was supposed to remember what the fuck she called me. I'll remember in a bit. I've never seen LG anything so crazy in my life. She, I do, I have an LG fridge, not an LG TV. Thank you. <laughs> I have LG F R I D G E. I've got all the letters. We're losing things. Do we have aliens? Something to distract them? Anything? <laughs> Yeah, 
He's starting to mention that every day. Start getting them used to the aliens, because we're going <laughs> to... Right, first you had the Las Vegas call. Remember the Las Vegas call? Today in Las Vegas, an alien landed in a neighborhood that was not by a trailer this time. This is legitimate neighborhood middle-class human beings. And then they, and then they played the, the, the phone message. And the guy's saying this, right? Yeah, it was, he's about eight to 10 feet tall. And we're very, very frightened. He's really- Jim Brewer has got something. He's been sober for a long time, but he's got something. Really tall, and there's two of them. They're maybe 12 feet tall, and we're just, we're terrified. <laughs> Is anyone buying this, or? Can we drum up climate change, please? Can... Listen, I know there's people. I, listen, I know people still are full-blown in on climate change. Why I think not? your yeah, heart is wonderful. <laughs> it is. But I, I'm begging you to look into it because I'm an 80s kid. And let me remind you how they recite. Yeah, let me, let me just, re- yes. Let me remind you of how climate change comes about. Okay? So I remember the 80s, the first thing they said, you can look it up. Remember the show Star Trek? It was huge. Spock. Spock. He was serious. He was like, he was like part alien and part no, no, no. Spock is all over the news. 1978, 1970, I'm like, we need someone that looks like a, like very serious, like a TV guy, an idol. Spock. He'd be perfect to sell this agenda. <laughs> we'll make lots of money and create universities, and they'll pay for them to fund our cause. <laughs> Send in Spock, and Spock comes in. Bum, 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 and they're showing blizzards. <laughs> Weather experts. <laughs> Scientists, experts in the world, all agree that in 10 years we are headed for an ice age. I don't ever curse during my shows, but that's a major fuck up. <laughs> Think of it's coming up, trust. For making a mistake about the ice age. Google it later for those who are like, I don't believe what he's saying because I don't like that he made in front of Donald Trump. And Trump is a sexist and he shouldn't even burn up his name. They divide the country and I don't like this guy. He did nothing for me, Bake. <laughs> You're a good human being. I love you. But you got to stop believing everything. <laughs> Those are voodoo words. Scientists, specialists, experts. Everyone just goes, oh my God, they're going to tell everything. <laughs> last three years of everyone's life. Then you're on Facebook. I'll listen to the experts, not the jackasses that think for themselves. <laughs> Some of us went to college. <laughs> oh, don't do that to me. That's why I gotta get away. It's madness, go, it's madness. You gotta get away. Gender. Good lord. Yeah. I was in Tanzania. I know that's a weird way to start off a conversation, but I... I like going to see the way people still live with no laws, 
through natural life, no phones, no television. And uh, I brought up, <laughs> I watched this guy, Matt Walsh, about what is a woman. And yeah, yeah. We should, and that's another thing, you can't tell me other countries aren't watching. Like, the pink country, we say German, Germany's going, on what's this thing? I'm going to try to define. I've never We'd heard. Like it. Hero Wars. Hero Wars? Oh, is that the one that was just on? Fuck off. Fuck what off. the man is and what the woman. That. And the people are actually supporting this one's administration. Watch what she said. Watch what she said. <laughs> and, and you have people starting to believe it. Well, I mean, the science and the... <laughs> people love that word, science. Tell me science i question nothing i put you on the altar <laughs> those religious people are real nutty cult-like oh really <laughs> so yeah you don't think there's people going by this but this one is going to be in the supreme court on the Biden administration watch what she said can you define what a woman is oh this one yeah I remember that i'm not a biologist <laughs> <laughs> Did I remember seeing that in the U.S. Senate? That was like, do you, can you define what a woman is? And this guy's like, well, I'm not a biologist. I'm not able to comment on that. It's, Fucking what? Oh. I didn't see one million on my LG woman morse. Like I didn't even see ten. Was being I didn't see anyone. <laughs> She's in your face. Like, ladies, they are in your face. Face, double finger to your face. You can't pee where you want, Duda, Duda. You wanted your own bathroom, now we take it away. There and goes all your rays. <laughs> Do you want to play a sport? Too bad, too bad. The boy with a dick can play <laughs> with you now. Do da, do da. As parents Why? go, this is inclusive, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Like, as parents at school, they're all about it. And you're just like, oh, what? This is real? It's not just on the internet? I have to now, like, like, accept that one of my children's friends is a they, them at six years old. I think they know what the fuck they are. I didn't know what I was until fucking two years ago. Hey, you want another fish? You want to go to the ball game? I don't mean sexually either. I just mean in general. <laughs> ooh, ooh. You don't want to get cancelled, do you? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Oh, I don't need what a law lad. or biology or an expert or a doctor to tell me what a woman is. And I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> you got some banana cut his donkey off getting ads from beer. <laughs> <sighs> I'll tell you what a woman is. A woman is is my wife who's given birth to three three girls that oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Street first, Boys, but first one got stuck. One first one was stuck <laughs> for hours. No drugs. They just. <laughs> Childbirth isn't always glamorous. I was promised drag! Quite never is. <laughs> She's screaming. <laughs> and you got these nurses, you're gonna have to calm down. <laughs> we just graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Female vagina. <laughs> Thing's head was stretched out. Seriously, they used a plunger. They call it a suction cup. This, that was her head. That's the first. That's my wife's first child. <laughs> mm-hmm. I grew up in Bally Stream. This kid ain't going to public school. Three kids, every time I'm on the road, she's getting psychologically just mutilated by these teenagers trying to divide and conquer us. Mom's always spending money when you're not awake, Dad. She's a real <laughs> issue. I think it's a disease. I looked it up, and I'm studying psychology in class where they're teaching us to hate our parents and divide the entire household. I don't know my sexuality. I don't know anything about anything anymore. <laughs> Taking our kids, I guess nothing. We're like, oh, oh, oh. I love That's it. a woman. <laughs> Surviving that. So I have to get away. I went away. It was the first time we were alone. We flew to uh <laughs> Might leave it there. I mean that's a good twenty minutes of some fucking great comedy. Uh, if anyone wants to watch it, it's, it's available on YouTube. It's Jim Brewer's Universe, uh, but it's his latest special that just came out, I believe, a day ago. Yeah, it pre- premiered midnight last night, uh, the night before last. Is it tonight yet? No, yeah, last night midnight. Whatever. Um, dude's a dude's a champ. Uh, we were gonna go and fucking what's what's this that uh, Danos has gone came out. Oh, you didn't do that to me. Don't tell me we wrecked my stream. Even a day ago, yeah. It, it premier- yeah, that's horribly fucking embarrassing. Uh, I thought you were going to put uh, something cool up. Sick this funny, but I don't really want to put my comedy on now. Ooh, Beyond Evil is pretty good sometimes. It's I love you. The mattress cover has changed my life, yeah. and here's why. I ad- he kind of rushed up on me a little bit. And that's when I just pushed him, boom, boom, boom. And he started going out toward the shed. I don't know how many times I shot him, but I just just kept right on going. Is boom, that LGTV? Boom, boom. And he just lay in there. This is Thomas Randolph. He is recreating the moment when he shot and killed a man who had just broken into his home and brutally murdered his wife. It's part of the reenactment he did just days uh, after yeah. the incident, wherein he uh, explains yeah. how he defended his home and his life by killing Michael Miller. Thomas is... St- I thought you were going to drop me that, um, when I mentioned a stream, uh, uh, something to react to, uh, Dan Oz, I thought you were going to drop me that weird Ocker guy. I couldn't find it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to find it, because this is... Straightforward. This is kind of cool, uh, but that's definitely night time. Like, I'm going to fall asleep watching that shit because, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find what I did actually want to watch. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, no. Sorry, it won't be long. I'll get something up on the screen in a sec. No. 
Why did you send me the hoof GP compacted rocks? Can you see the real problem? I'm intrigued by it. <laughs> Nah, it's up here somewhere. I know it is. There's something sick up here. There's a video I really... Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's coming up. Sick. Thick, rotten... Uh, just... Uh, can I just copy the link? Copy link. Let's go. Yeah, I wanted to watch this one. Watch it. I didn't watch this when you sent it to me, Danos, so I kind of saved it for this. Train cleaning Australia. Is a problem? Oh. 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 Cleaning Australia family, we are back, oh. with an absolute ripper. Oh. So as we can see on the road there, that's a council sewer. So it's not far from the uh, from the property oh. inspection shaft just there. I reckon the blockage is probably pretty bloody close. Oh, shit though. So guys, how have we been? It's uh, it's been a minute. And uh, look, guys, I've got the GoPro on today. We mix it up a little bit. Sometimes I'll have the phone out recording, and other days I've got the GoPro on. So we'll give this a whirl. Let me know in the comments. Uh, do you like the GoPro? You know, I've got it stuck on the middle of my head, so I feel like a bit of a clown, but... I don't like your GoPro, no. Guys. <laughs> so anyway, everything in this property is so Everything's chock-a-block, mate. It's overflowing out the inspection shaft here. So, look, as I said, so we can see the council sewer in the uh, middle so of the road key. there. So I reckon the blockage is between the inspection shaft and the council sewer. I hope you can hear me, guys, because uh, I'm not used to wearing the bloody. I hope you can hear me. So this is uh, we're all uh, we're all learning something today. I'm learning a lot you today. To excuse the state of the van, guys. It's an absolute dog's breakfast, I know, but I've just been bloody flat out this week. So uh, look, the van needs to be sorted out, but uh, there's a He's drain. Just forcing to himself to Aussie on so this voiceover. It's so uh, good. Let's stick her down there and see how we get on. Ah. Oh, yum, this looks bloody delicious. <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, guys, like I just said before, it's been a bloody while. So, you know, send me a comment. Send me a message in the comments and let me know how you've been. <laughs> let me know where you're watching from. Just say g'day. It'd be great to hear from you. How could I do What are you doing? The MVP of Drain Cleaning Australia. Family, there we are. I think it could be the new mascot. What are you doing? What are you anyway, doing? Let's fire this jet up, guys. It's the most triangle time. Thank you. I just can't clean my glasses properly. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Drain Cleaning Hi. Australia. Hi. So you yeah. have. He'd be alone with those glasses like a rash. Oh shit. Shit, we've got to get the undies out the way. We don't want the undies getting dirty, mate. <laughs> I need to fucking take a break for a second. You know what? <laughs> Chocolate ad for the drains. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, fuck. This is... It's absolutely killing me. I just need to breathe for a second. I'll be back. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to be sick as well at the same time, which I'm not usually squeamish over this shit, but that's just fucked up. I think some things should have been seen, let alone said. But yeah, let's get the undies out of the way. Get so some get chocolate dirty. log, India. <laughs> I don't think I'm eating any chocolate tonight, mate.
<laughs> they do not want chocolate. <laughs> They'll just do my screen. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Thick, rotten, who, and we, and we. <laughs> you also know I was trying to smoke a billy. <laughs> you know I was trying to smoke a billy by then, didn't you? <laughs> Oh man, no, this <laughs> made me feel so fucking rotten for a minute, I'm going to get back to it, I had to step away from the screen after I saw that splash, I'm sorry that it's still on the screen. <laughs> oh, I didn't think I'd be, uh, I, uh, okay, let's go. Uh, okay, no, just in a minute, uh. I was fucking feeling hungry. <laughs> I was gonna eat. <laughs> it changes so quickly. <laughs> I think it's his pride. I think it's his pride. It's really ruining me. <laughs> Just having fun with it. It makes me be playing with poo in a cubicle. <laughs> I just can't. <sighs> I need to wee now because I've been fucking gigging so much. I'll be back in two seconds, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry, that's just too fucking... Oh, fuck. That was... Oh, shit. That's... There's oh, another fucking 15 minutes of this. Thick, rotten, we. <laughs> Something about the suggestion of thick we. <laughs> it's still killing me. All right, I think I've composed myself. I'm so sorry about that fucking interlude. I just, I couldn't keep watching that for a second. I just, I actually need to breathe. Um. <laughs> hey, I Let's reckon go. you've already bloody cleared this. Look at this, it's bloody, oh! This will put some hairs on your chest, mate. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely through it, guys. It's, uh, yeah, it was just where we thought it was going to be, between the inspection shaft and the main sewer on the road there. <laughs> and what a bloody mess. I mean, that could be the bloody cover photos of the video, I think, guys, you know? <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, we'll soon see anyway, but, oh, wow. <laughs> That's a sick thumbnail. <laughs> This guy's thoughts is, that's a great thumbnail. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> oh. Don't pull it too hard. Oh. <laughs> You've got to bloody love it, guys. You've got to bloody love this. <laughs> now, this has got to be the bloody cover photo. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> if you're not going to click on this bit thumbnail, you're bloody mad, mate, because this is what dreams are bloody made of. <laughs> now, guys, we're just going to clean this up a little bit first, and then we'll send the, uh, send the root cutter down. <laughs>
<laughs> if you like Blackie Love this, I don't love it at all. <laughs> Shit, there's 25 more minutes, not 15 minutes. Everywhere, just <laughs> I mean, where would you rather be, guys? In the comments, <laughs> his whistling just kills it. Follow, let me know where would you rather be because. I'm going to find out where I'd rather be, guys. I mean, this is the dream. This is the great Australian dream. And look, I can't speak on behalf of every Australian, you know, because we've all got different dreams. But I'll tell you what, it's my bloody dream, mate. This is an absolute joy. There's <laughs> shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, guys, someone else's <laughs> treasure is, is someone else's treasure. Whistling. <laughs> I think it's what it is, the whistling. Just went. <laughs> How else would you rather be? Where else? <laughs> oh my. Just praying every. Angle. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna get the workspace a little bit bloody clean, guys. So hold on, why did he bring the undies out anyway? He brought the undies out and then he's Someone to put else's them away. trash is someone else's treasure. What's he doing with the, the undies? A little he brought bit them out of his truck, didn't he? Because uh, we're gonna send the jet down again. We're gonna send the camera down to see exactly what's going on down there. I'm assuming there's tree roots, but. Look, the owner reckons they've had uh, their clay drains replaced with PVC at some point, so it could be where the uh, the PVC connects to the uh, you know the clay drain. That's where the roots are getting into. But first, let's give this an absolute blasting, guys. Puddles. Yeah, he's focused on the shit stain, not everywhere else. There's shit there! Is the idea here just to put <laughs> Is the idea here just to put it on council property? Just spray all the shit, just dissipated enough that it's just like it didn't even poo on the beach and it got washed up ashore. Is that what the game is here? Because. Just I've... atomizes it. Yeah, I just see a lot of shit spraying around. How much does. gets on him? Because that. that can't not get on him. It's all in the crack! Oh, did you see that? Oh, and that crack there. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, you know what I just realized? Oh, but it's all right. I'm watching the screen in front of me. But I am reversed because of the fucking wheel. Hold on, let me just... um. actually have to do this just for my own fucking sake. Because I realized I'm not looking in the same direction as it looks like to others. Uh, why can't I fucking do it? Uh, 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 uh. Not transform. Where is trans? <laughs> I'm using my um other monitor now, so it's sort of uh horizontal. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm looking the same way as everyone. Yeah, let's go. 
that's that's all shit in those cracks. That's all the shit that he just blew out, and then he's, he's not even gonna focus on it. Look, it's not much has changed in two hundred years. We just blow shit onto the road. I'm not a huge fan of pressure washing. Oh, I'm guessing he's washing himself now. That's pretty good to see, I guess, because I, I, I was concerned about him. Do you think that was a big chunk of gold or something? How the fuck did he even bring it up? stink in your truck then after that as well like what the fuck i don't understand how these guys work i will send a jet downstream as well just to give that a good blast out because there's nothing worse than buddy trying to send a camera down and you're just faced with bloody you know crap you know we want to see what's going on if there's tree roots we want to be able to bloody clearly see it guys so let's give this drain a flush Most of the time you just get the job sort of, but this owner, he wants photos and videos of exactly what's going on. Right, put a body in the fucking drain. This man is sick so bad. Couldn't imagine. Couldn't imagine, like, I mean... The sweat of doing the job, right? He's going to smell sweaty and gross and his feet are going to stink in those shoes. But every layer of him, <laughs> all of his tools. <laughs> like, you can't clean off the hose that you dip down and then bring out and dip down and bring out. You can't clean that shit. Or you can. I mean, that's not cleaning all the layers that went down there, though. Let's have a right. Turn that. Turn it off. Turn the off. Hey guys, let's get this drain camera out. Yeah, they look like guys, apologies for the state of the It's been. Here we are. It's it's been a week in a bit, guys. So uh, the the van needs a good clean. I know, but. Uh, Alright, let's get this camera down. Yeah, I'm hoping we haven't blasted these roots out in the, in the first go. It's always nice just to punch your way through the blockage and then be able to get a bit of footage when the drain's clear. To send to the owner. Um, so we have the bend here. It's all right, to clean this lens up, and I'll tell you what, we've got oh, is that what the undies are for? Mate, and I'll wear them on Saturday night. Anyway. <laughs> all right, guys, you got your swimwear on. I've got me bloody green. Oh, we call them turquoise? Yeah, turquoise undies on. I'm swimming in me turquoise undies in the drain with these guys, all right? 
And as you can see, we've uh, look the drain's a little bit full, and I, I think we've just pushed that that bloody paper mache downstream. It's like it's going down a bloody water slide, guys. See you later, mate. See ya. <laughs> Camera would smell yeah. like poo. <laughs> All right, what is going on? Oh no, you're still there. We need, <laughs> need to give you a little bit more of a nudge. <laughs> give you a nudge. See if we it's can like push surgery. This and see if we can push that paper mache downstream down the water slide. That's not paper There's mache. No evidence bro. of roots just yet. That shitty toilet just paper. Let's see if we can push okay. that bloody yeah that load of toilet paper down, and it might bloody uh, help us. Help us see what's going on. Oh, hang on a second. It's gone. Look, it's all starting to flow away now. Lovely. All right, so this is obviously the clay section. She's she's bloody racing away, mate. This is the clay section of drain here. And it's it's so just a bit of a dog's breakfast, another... this drain, mate. I mean, it's clay and PVC. Look, there's a clay junction there. I don't know where the bloody hell that's. What's picking that up? Now you can see there's a bit of a pooling... Uh, Bit of water pooling in this drain now, so yeah, look, I, I reckon what we're going to do is we'll uh, get, we'll obviously give this drain a, a really thorough blasting, but yeah, I just assumed we'd see some tree roots or something down here, mate. So no, it's just no sign fucking of that lazy just yet. cunts with bloody. Uh, a lot I mean, of wet this drain wipes. shouldn't be pooling like that. It's slowly it's going away, is. but uh, yeah, not ideal. All right, you can see there's a uh, little bit of a, jo a joint there. Is yeah, see, there's nothing on that joint. That looks. I feel like uh, he's going to tell me there's a cyst or a mate. polyp on it or something. It looks like a Drag fucking it back a little colonoscopy. Bit. Another joint there. She's sweet. Look, this is uh, there's some PVC to clay here. Let's see if I can get a better view of it, but maybe that's where the roots were getting in. Oh, I can see a couple little fine roots there, but all right. Oh, look at oh, look at that coming out that junction. It's a fl someone's just bloody flushed the dunny on us, guys. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, it's a really old house. The drains are going everywhere, so we're just going to give everything a bloody great blast. <laughs> so we just flushed the dunny on us. Blasted me. Wow, look at this right, kid. Stick all this little pressure blast. This is, uh, this is generally for root cutting, but mate, she's got a fair bit of power, so just make sure the drains are absolutely Mickey Mouse with her, and we'll just get this one bloody sorted, guys, and we'll be out of here shortly. We got another job to, to another job to go to after this one, guys. So bear with us. Oh, I can't wait. Fire this jet up. On that note, I had somebody pumping a drain across the road at like midnight on a Sunday one night and went out and asked him what he was doing and he was like, oh, it won't be long. And the wife went out and was like, no, you can fucking stop and get the fuck out of here. You know, I've got kids at school in the morning. I was kind of like, why are we doing that at midnight anyway? And um, But they had a lot of drain pumping at their house. We thought they put people down the drain. Fire this jet up, guys. You'll just hear the power from it. <laughs> that noise at fucking midnight on a Sunday night. Like, why then? <laughs> Oh, that hose will stink like so much shit. Everyone's shit. All sorts of shits. Curry. Lasagna. Pasta bake. A palmy in there somewhere. sexual with it in a way it's sort of really nice and gives it a good tug but gives it back you know it's, it's, it's sort of caring caressing it I reckon that's sweet guys uh, we'll pull this out we'll send the camera down just to give her a double check before we go 
don't really want to see the camera view again. It just feels like I'm looking up someone's ass. I think. I mean, look at those turquoise beauties. They're absolutely oh, marvellous. You know, they could be used for many things in this world, but today they're just going to clean me camera. Come with the favourite dinner. Now we'll just send this down for one final inspection, guys, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see from the GoPro to the screen. Hopefully you can uh, you see what I'm seeing. As I said, I'm very new to the GoPro on the head, so it's uh, it's going to be a bit of trial and error for the first few videos. And guys, if you're liking the GoPro on the head, just you know, as I say, let me know in the comments. And if you want me to go back to the old school uh, phone in the hand, look, mate. You guys, it's your channel. You let me know what you like. But anyway, this drain is looking bloody sweet, guys. We've all done a bloody great job. Now, while we are packing up, guys, it's that awkward time of the video where I just... I think it's worth the like, subscribe. Out with it, guys. If you could subscribe... Oh, we already did it, bro. No, we already did it. If you could it. like this video, I'd absolutely love it. And we've done that, can't man. be bothered doing either of them. Thank you very much for simply spending part of your day or part of your night watching the videos. I really appreciate it, guys. Each and every one of you, whether you're subscribed or not, whether you've liked the video or not, you're all watching, so thank you very bloody much. You know, I really oh, appreciate much. it. I don't know how many views you get. 64,000 subscribers, 37,000 views. Yeah, you're getting money for all the views, so... The <laughs> you know, it's easy to say thanks for watching, but you're getting monetized. <laughs> Drop me arm anyway. Oh, come on, guys, pull your weight, mate. I mean, I'm doing everything here. I would have thought one of you would bloody at least roll the hose up. Now you talk like a wanker. Cleaning Australia we family. You. We are back, mate. Yeah, guys, today we got a, uh, a block sewer when uh, everything in the house is chopped a block, mate. I mean, I was just chatting to the owners before and they're like, Bruce, this is living hell. And I mean, look at that, Daddy's full. Give her a flush. Oh, yeah, she's I hate not that. budging, mate. Just she's chopped a block. So, you tried uh, to plunge it, guys. And what? Hello, mate. Yeah, just, just picked his pocket. Got some keys off him. No, he didn't see that, did he? And anyway, we've a stroll on through. We'll have a look at this overflow it's relief going out the back. Yeah, we're just taking a couple of boards up, and mate, she is overflowing like you've never seen before. So uh, yeah, lovely us, stuff. Uh, yeah, once upon a time, this uh, bit of land's been subdivided, so there's a new house over the fence there, and apparently the main sewer runs the inspection shaft at the front of that. He's uh, got his fucking GoPro house. running at so anyway, I'm going to try and jet from this overflow like relief shite. gully here first, and then uh, if we can't clear it from that. here, we're going to have a little bit of a, uh, a drive around into the other street and go and find that inspection shaft on the other property. So. Uh, Anyway, talk about bloody days for it, guys. It's an absolute day for it. I mean, we've had a bit of rain here in Perth, Western Australia, and we're bloody loving it. And yes, I did check if my van was locked, guys. I've seen a couple of characters walking around here. Speaking of characters in the comments below, who am I? The one and only, the great man. All right, so you see we've had to pull up some boards to get to this overflow relief, and yes, I've got the bloody undies here. Of course I've got the undies. I'm not a fan of the undies. All right, there's a great down here. Oh, you're gonna get your hand oh, in mate, the, yep, go on, you just gotta it. love this sort of stuff, oh. you know? No, you don't have to love it. Come up, you. There we are. Oh, that's a bit chunky, isn't it? It looks like there's paper floating around. Yeah, me. They're using Poo fucking on wet wipes. <laughs> Poo on my hand. What are you expecting Let's in your job, up, mate? ladies and gentlemen. That's the main, is continuing like, to soar. Soar shut up. Helping smart Australia. It's the main way that they sort of get rid of blockages is by just pumping pressure down it, but that just creates a whole fucking mess all over you. And 
God knows what comes back up out of that. That's that's hard work. All right, we're at the blockage. is about 10 metres downstream from this gully, guys. It's probably bloody tree roots. Well, they said this outdoor dunny was bloody blocking up as well, so we'll give it a flush and have a look. Yeah, she's looking sweet as, guys. That's a fucking hardcore flush. That's, that's like the... There's a lot of water pressure in that flush. Ooh, there's a bit of a mess there. We'll have to clean this up. <laughs> yep, pull all the shitty hose up and just put it back in your van. Just make sure we get all oh. the roots first. trying to pull them and like get under them and pull them a bit. I can't tell if that's still on or not. Is he still got the pressure on? Yeah, I think he does. You see the My water toilet sinking. flush is really weak. I wish it was live. I know that's a strong that. flush. I'd love a strong flush. I got a new toilet a couple of years ago and it was like uh, it's a smaller, like it's the smaller water reservoir that I've ever seen. I didn't realize until I've installed it. And the flush is really weak, so you got to like double flush it every time you shit. It's the worst. Imagine that outhouse toilet. Like you could make a mess in that. One pump, bam, it's clean. That was like a waterfall. I never see the toilet flush like that. And they're complaining about the plumbing. Yeah, I'm just going to use the hose that we put down and give it a rough idea of where this blockage was. Yeah, so it's past past the fence there, through that gate. So it's so the blockage is definitely in the neighbour's property. That's a clever idea to look at it. I mean, Such a common if he issue knows where the drain blocks. is going. Run the line and then go. Flush. Our toilet is ancient and it's just calcified from the desert water up here. Oh, yeah, that's a different thing. Yeah, I think they do water saving shit now. Yeah, I've got a double flush, personally. I think we're giving it a piss after double flush. Not much shit in this one. He's just doing a lot of pressure spraying. I don't like pressure spraying. Guys, it's clear. I see the problem. I'll see if we can get a good shot down there. But it's clear. But I wanted to send the jet upstream and just make sure that we can pull anything that's up there. Pull her out. Is this the neighbour's property now, is it? I'm guessing it is. Oh yeah, that's the other side of the fence. Isn't it? All right, so to be fair, like I think the rest of the videos. Wanna be a bit more time than the than the beginning, but that beginning was absolute fucking hell. Um. drains for a month, there's no plumber on the skin here. Okay, we would do that another time. Uh, get some food now, because I um, probably need to watch something other than that and get some food. I might, um, I'm going to watch this. Uh, if you want to watch along with me, feel free. I'll be back to watch some of it. Um, I'll be watching in the background anyway. Um, I'm just going to turn the camera off and grab some food. So yeah, I might just leave the stream running and put this one back on because this was quite good. I'll put it back to the start so we get a good context and then we'll go from there. Um, he kind of rushed up on me a little bit. If I do and that's fall when asleep, I just pushed him. Boom, uh, boom, I'm boom. Sorry he started if going start out snoring. toward the shed. I don't know how many times I shot him, but I just, not to. just kept right on going. Boom! 
boom, boom, and they just lay in there. This is Thomas Randolph. He is recreating the moment when he shot and killed a man who had just broken into his home and brutally murdered his wife. It's part of the reenactment he did just days after the incident, wherein he explains how he defended his home and his life by killing Michael Miller. Thomas is straightforward and tries to explain every um, detail of what happened that night. He fits the pattern so exactly that. of someone defending their home and loved ones. I'm he should too. sound that way so because he's been practicing for this moment since the 1970s and through six wives. Come with us as we take a look at the life and schemes of Thomas Randolph, a man who buried four wives and terrorized two more, the man who made a good living off of bad marriages. Before we begin, we would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the victims of Thomas Randolph and their families. If you want to make money online as an affiliate marketer, you may find this a little bit controversial, but we've stumbled across a way to earn reliable paychecks week after week. Paychecks like 12, bang, 14, bang, bang. and $22,000 consistently like clockwork. It was a dry, warm, breezy evening on May the 8th, 2008, when Thomas Randolph pulled into the driveway of his home that he shared with his wife, Sharon. The two were returning from picking up Thursday night dinner, and as the garage door opened, he let her out of the car to walk in on her own. Their home, located at 6517 Rancho Santa Fe Drive in Las Vegas, Nevada, had a two-car garage, but it was a bit too narrow to allow one to open both doors of the car if both cars were parked inside. As Sharon got out, she was carrying a bag with their dinner in it. Thomas turned up the stereo and listened to music as he waited for her to go in. Thomas eased the car into the garage after his wife went at the house, the radio still blaring. He took his time. Inside the home, Sharon made her way down the central corridor of the house, still in the dark. There, just before entering the bedroom, 38-year-old Michael James Miller allegedly shot her in the head from nearly point-blank range. Sharon fell to the ground, her life's blood draining out on the tile floor of the hallway. Let's let Thomas, in his reenactment that he did for investigators just days after the killing, give his account of what happened next. This is it, just coming on in the house. Now this door was closed, so I open it up. I get right here and Sharon's laying in the floor, face down, her head's just barely, I mean, barely in the bedroom with that. And I stopped right about here, I had the door, I said, Sharon, Sharon. And I seen the, um, the bag from charcoal steak or whatever, and it's really a bright red. And this hall light, this hall light wasn't on at the time. So it's just like so, this? Just about like this, and I turned the light on myself as we got in. And um, I could see that red, that red thing and it was up underneath her and I thought it was blood. I thought that was blood then. And I started to get nervous <laughs> about backing off and I actually came to the door and I touched it and then I stopped and put it back down because I thought, nah, this is, I was gonna go get a neighbor and I took the, something like that. And about, about right here when I was like this, I was trying to kind of get a view. I thought I just seen like a shadow or something over this way. And I remembered that there's a, the nine millimeter right up here because earlier I'd taken all my guns, put them in a suitcase, was gonna take them to Utah and switch the guns around. I reached right up here, got the gun, and as I got the gun, there's also an extra clip. There's a few up there, but I got the gun and the clip, and I'd already started to run, and then I just reached up just like that, grabbed it, stuck it in my pocket, came around just like that, and about that time, he's right up on me. Just right up on me, and we actually touched right about here. And he's short, he's short. And when he 
don't know if he gave me an elbow, but as we came around like that, I was kind of coming out. I was actually going to try to be slow, you know, and look out, but it just happened too quick. We came up and he kind of banged into me about right here. And then he went over to about right here and somewhere along here, I bit my mouth or something, trying to say something like, what the fuck or something. And he looked kind of like, and I don't know if he was looking in here to see if there was somebody else or what. And there was a, he had on a sweatshirt and I don't remember if I seen the handle in the sweatshirt, if I seen the handle down his pants, but he was doing something, going for something down in here. And as we got up in here and he kind of rushed up on me a little bit and that's when I just pushed him, boom, boom, boom. And he started going out toward the shed. I don't know how many times I shot him, but I just, just kept right on going. Boom, boom, boom. And he just lay in there, just lay in there. And I look back because then I'm trying to make sure everything's cool. Kind of stepping back like that. And about that time, I heard the really, really loud noise. And what had happened is I guess he had hit the refrigerator and the, help me here, the, Fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher fell down. I didn't know what it was, but it made a loud clunk. And I was kind of, like I said, I was kind of looking back because I don't hear well and I can't tell depth perception anything. Our 56 crystal pack for only $159 is quickly becoming one of our most popular items. We have many crystal gridding kits also to choose from, crystal water bottles, and a variety of crystal shapes, sizes. Crystal skulls are coming soon to the shop as well. This is our look at our 45 set, also a very popular pack. Only $139 for all 45 crystals in that kit. We have points, we have spheres, we have mushrooms, we have clusters, we have geodes, we have large dark amethyst crystals that are so beautiful we have crystal jewelry when you shop at spirit magica you actually end up paying 50 to 75 percent less on average than you would pay at other oh crystal retail shops in your local city or even on etsy our prices are Some absolutely incomparable Brad. thomas's story from the very beginning crystal. is that he confronted an unexpected really like intruder crystal. shot and killed the man as he attempted to flee the scene after killing thomas's wife the murder weapon Miller had used was a pistol that Thomas had moved away from the man's body at the request of medical personnel on the 911 call. Michael was not supposed to be in the home, and it appears that the couple had surprised the man. Some things, however, just didn't add up to investigators who were on the scene when they compared what they saw with what Thomas claimed. Thomas, in his reenactment of the encounter, would describe bumping into Michael in the hallway but not recognizing him because the man was fumbling with his mask at the time. There would be an immediate break for the garage door by the intruder and shots fired by Thomas. Thomas would follow the intruder into the garage and after being startled, he would put two he more shots into vapors. the man's head. W one or twice, I can't remember. Oh, okay. Once or okay. twice and I was still in here. So and he's, I, he's laying, he's laying head that way. Uh, almost head, almost head and body kind of this way and his legs over here, one hand there and okay. that's so about it. His, no, wait, wait, his hand would have been up underneath here. So he was kind of laying like this, kind of laying like this okay. the fir at first. And when the noise came down, I shot one or two times um, along here. Okay. So uh, it may have been once, it may have been twice. Where'd you hit him then? Pardon me? Where'd you hit him? Uh, I shot it as, I shot him in the head. Shot him in the head. Shot him, in the head. him in the head? I think so, yeah. Okay. In the head or in the, up in the back area, somewhere through here. And you're standing about that? You're standing uh, about that? I think so. I, 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 somewhere around in here. So you could see his head at that point? You could I see could. his face? How was his head in, in relation to the floor? Was it facing down at the floor or was it facing up towards you? Was it facing out to the side, to the west? It was kind of facing this way. Okay, so, kind of so down. more or less down. Yeah. So you'd probably hit him in the back. And I don't think, I don't think, let me think here. So you probably hit him in the back of the head? Could you tell it was Mike yet? I knew it was Mike, uh, 
because um, of his chin. But I don't know if he had his mask on then. It seems like he still had his mask on then. It happened really fast. I don't know. But well, it he seems had his like mask it, on when you were when he was yeah, backing away from right? Yeah, he had his mask on okay. there for sure. I got to go with it. But I know when I came out, his mask was over here, I think. This guy doesn't seem anything at all. I just got to call that. I really do. Uh, I had the wrong scene on. Go over here. This guy's full of shit. I don't know. I ain't going to say that either, because that may have been some of the shit he got out of the house that was there. I don't know. There's that. I don't know. So I, I really don't know. I was scared. Him now turning and you continuing to shoot and him going to the ground, he's still got his mask on. I think so. I think so. Just like you thought, it, thought you shot him in the head, but maybe the back. But yeah, the head. But it might have been the back. You couldn't tell who he was yet. I don't. When he was facing you here in the hallway, if, if he'd had this a mask guy on, needs crystals. you'd have known it was Mike, right? This guy needs Christianity. I never say that about anyone, but, uh, yeah, mm, guy needs Jesus. Oh, yeah. And I was still shouting. I was still shouting. It wouldn't have mattered a bit. Is this in Florida? <laughs> I just got to... Where was this case again? Where's... I can't remember. The problem is that when police arrived on the scene, Michael was not wearing a mask, but it was lying on the floor next to him. Las Vegas Metro Police Detective Clifford Vegas, Moggs okay. would testify at the trial about the mask discrepancies. Uh, the next thing that I thought was unusual was um, when he was discussing the mask and how this person had the mask that was slightly rolled up on their face, uh, and then the shooting occurs, and then the victim or the purported perpetrator is down in the garage on the floor, and then he tells me that the mask is kind of lying on the floor next to him. Um, I know when I walked through, I recalled seeing the mask lying there, but it wasn't in a position that it was like it had just fallen off of his head as he hit the floor. So those were some of the things that I thought was unusual that I wanted to address with Detective O'Kelly uh, and then take another look at the scene. In addition, Thomas claimed that Michael must have been burglarizing the home when Sharon entered the house, except the house didn't look like anyone had really burglarized it. Once again, detectives explain what they did and did not see in the home when it came to the alleged burglary. Um, the dresser that we see, um, kind of more I zoomed in on it in the photo. Um, those drawers appear to be pulled out a little bit. Yes. Okay. So in other burglaries and home invasions that you've investigated, would the appearance of these drawers be consistent with what you had seen at those other crime scenes? That was the first time I had seen drawers lined up that perfectly and not pulled out to the point where you could that access like, the contents of the drawers. You know, that, that looks like uh, what my and my wife's toolbar looks like when we just haven't pushed the clothes into the drawers properly and there's, you know, a bit too much clothing in the drawers. My child, my children's one looks like that as well. If someone was looking through them, that wouldn't be what it looked like. There'd be one, two pulled out at least, if not even just thrown out completely or the contents being on the floor yeah i'm putting on the overhead now states 110 um different view of that same dresser that you were just speaking of yeah just clothes There's coming out of it a television in the in the middle of the photo for lack of better identification correct the cabinets below it don't appear to be open no um what are we looking at in that photograph it's a bag with uh, some clothing items in it that was sitting on the floor next to the television. Bag obviously not dumped out? No. Drawers on the lower part of the dresser not pulled out? Correct. And sort of the right side of the bed as you're facing the bed? That looks like yes, something that was just another got drawer that out. was pulled out, but it didn't appear that anything in the drawer had been disturbed. Ah, someone got some socks out next, and shut their drawer. Next, what's the question of who was Michael Miller? And how did Thomas come to know him? We got to be in love with him. He'd come over and, and borrow, you know, 20 bucks, do a little bit of work. Is there anything I can't tell you at all that happened that day that made him believe that 
he needed to get into your house that night. I I did it. I took a twenty. I took twenty grand out of the bank. Okay. Twenty grand transfer. Right. And you thought it's good with you then when you had a large amount of cash. I always got large amounts of cash, but yeah. Why don't you think he shot you? He was trying to. I've told you this over and over. He was trying to. Investigators would find out that the two men were more than just casual Why acquaintances, does that guy look such a trance? After getting a subpoena on telephone records, it was discovered that the two men had Sorry. more than 300 phone calls to each other in the six to eight week period prior to the incident. Michael, a 38-year-old black man from North Carolina, seemed an unlikely person to meet up with and befriend a 53-year-old white man originally from Utah. They just didn't have very much in common. Michael needed money, and he unless they were gay for pay. He struck up a fast and what he thought was a strong friendship with Thomas. Michael would even call back home and tell his friends and family about Thomas. Michael's brother, Rico, mm -hmm. and a lifelong friend, Judy it. Archer, would later tell investigators that they had reasons to think that something was up. Well, Mike told me he said he had got a, a nine millimeter. I don't know what kind of nine millimeter. He, it was, he got that from the white guy. Did you say that? From the white guy. And that's all that man was talking about. Killing his wife, killing his wife, you know. During a questioning of Thomas after the killings, detectives push a bit hard, and Thomas reacts as if he feels they're becoming suspicious of him. He pushes back and tries to call their bluff. Sharon, in one word, what would you say? Ricardo. Ricardo. I'm a cocky. What? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm cocky for long. I just set yourself up. I'm a cocky. I'm a cocky. Fuck up. Oh, yeah, man. No, I worked for the lawyers for a long time, just as an investigator, as paralegal, ran a lot of their law, but the, I talked to you more than anybody I've talked to. Him. That's, that's where it is. He thinks he's going to get away with it because he knows the system. He's worked with the system. He thinks he's going to fucking play up. He's, he's dead. Sure he's fucking him. done. And the grandkids. Oh, you're like my best friend, dude. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't have secrets. Uh, right? Uh, <laughs> right. What do you mean? Well, no, thanks, because you know what? Unless you come and, and just tell me I'm under arrest or you just really need to talk to me to clear something else up, I'm probably not coming back out of here for at least 30, 40 days. You think we should tell you you're under arrest? No, because if you already stuff, this something needs to be for you. The it has, uh, it has its issues. I like you. You I don't like, by the way. Okay. I don't know why. I just don't like you. Oh, uh, look at him trying to... It's not that I don't trust, but I think I'll pay the boss. The move buys Thomas some time, but in a few days, he stumbles no into something completely unexpected. He returns That's... to the home on Rancho Santa Fe Drive. That's such a passive-aggressive move. I just want to comment on that. Like... So to say, you, I like you, you, I don't like you, you know, and no, I'm doing so. You're gonna, mm, good move on his behalf in his head, but he's still to any investigator, he'd look like he's hiding something there by being like that, by being abrasive in that way. If he has been, uh, you know, involved with law enforcement or anything, he'd be more cooperative and not abrasive. Uh, but being abrasive and saying, you, I don't like, that's sort of like, uh, now you're trying to be the stern guy. Now you're trying to be the position of power. And that shows you're guilty of something to me. And finds that officers are there and that the locks on the property have all been changed. Sharon's daughter, Colleen, from a previous marriage, has taken possession of the property after producing a will Ooh. Sharon had made just days Juicy. before the killing. Prior to this, Thomas had thought that a will that he and Sharon had worked out gave him partial ownership of the home. He did not know that Sharon and a friend had done this because the two had become suspicious of him. Voicemails left for go, his baby. stepdaughter Colleen show just how his attitude towards her had changed from nice to vile in the days before and after discovering the new will. Hi Colleen, this is Tom. I am just gonna try my darkness to buck up and get the cleaning done and try to save us some money to get this house for sale to get this on the market and get on with it. And this message. Hi, give me a call and this is 
Now it's starting to turn. Oh, now we're going to be here. Okay. Hi, I was actually calling to apologize for getting so upset with you, but that's what happens when people look me in the eyes and lie to me. Now the lawyers are going to get all the money because I still get half the house because I'm married to your mama. Um, I forgive you. I'm sorry I called you bad names. See ya. Thomas would have to just make do with the life what insurance nice. policy payouts he would receive after Sharon's death. He knew those were his alone and that he had set them up himself. Without a home in Las Vegas now, Thomas returned to Utah and moved in with his mother to wait out the insurance company. When investigators learned that Thomas had returned to his home state, they made a call back to local law enforcement agencies just to let them know what they were doing as they were involved in the first stages of the investigation into the murder of Thomas Randolph's wife and the killing of her assailant within the home. You see, in 1986, in that very town, yeah, Thomas born. Randolph had been accused of killing his wife and that at trial a I man had that. testified that he had been approached about killing her for Thomas and a grand jury began debating whether charges should be brought against the man for killings of not just Michael Miller, but for Sharon Randolph as well. It took several months of debate, but the grand jury eventually ruled on January 7, 2009, that charges Love could be insurance. brought. Utah law enforcement agencies Love were more than happy brother. to comply with Las all, Vegas's it's always request about life for insurance. assistance in the arrest. That's what I love about uh, that chapter. Mikey, on that, that chapter, he has a little meme uh, whenever it comes to life insurance. I'm going to just fucking, we're going to cut to it for a second because, by golly, it's so much fun. Um, uh, that chapter, life insurance, will just follow up with meme. He, like every time he has a, a story about life insurance and he's got some, some extra ones with, you know, just life insurance ones, but he does his meme. Ah, oh, it's got, it doesn't have the sound. He, he, he gets right into it and uh, he just chucks it in every time. Fuck. Why can't I find it? Hold on. Sorry, I just want to find this fucking meme. Like, there we go. That's that's what I want to see. Grammarly's five he's, tips he's for so writing good a at professional this. email. Email writing he chucks is it in super. On all of his little bits. It's every time he just gets a life insurance case going, this comes up. Now that's obviously the repeated long version of it, but like um, he just chucks that in as a little uh, interlude while he's doing his his stories, and I think this needed that right then. Just a little oh, what was that for? Life insurance. It's fucking such a good meme. He's so good. Put with your that. hands on your head right now. Come out. Get on the ground. Hands on the head. Oh, hands on your back. You're hurting me. Oh my God. He killed someone. Thomas would be quickly extradited back to Las hurt. Vegas. Before we go into the trial that follows, this would be a good place to stop and take a look at the. He looks like such a female. I don't mean to be rude or like fucking. But he's got little piggy tails, and it's like, is this early trans sort of shit? But they keep talking about him as male, so I don't know. And calling Thomas Randolph. Looks like the first fucking trans. The man, Thomas Randolph, and the six marriages he had been through. Marriages where... Obviously not happy with this fucking... I mean, you know, this one's gorgeous. That, that one top right, top left. You know, for their age. And the bottom three, I don't know what he's doing these men. Only two of Sorry. his wives were still alive. 
On August 2, 1975, a 20-year-old Thomas Randolph married his high school sweetheart, Catherine, in a wedding ceremony held at the Randolph family's That's backyard. So cute, she was 18 and a recent graduate. The couple would have two children, a son it's named Justice and a daughter, Krista. The rocky LGTV relationship would end in there. divorce. And in later years, an old friend of his, Steve, would come forth and say that Thomas had asked him. <laughs> Why is his friend called Steve? <laughs> Am I the only one that makes it? <laughs> After all these years, an old friend would come to him named Steve. Steve. And he looks as steezy as fuck. Oh, Krista. The rocky relationship Where would end it? in divorce. And in later years, an old friend of his, Steve, <laughs> would come forth and say that Steve. Thomas had asked him, Would you... Of course that guy's called Steve. ...kill someone for money if you knew you would get away with it? Steve would then say Friend. that he had been told that Steve. Thomas had taken out a number of life insurance policies on Kath. Why are all friends of American killers and murderers it's called Steve? It's a funny on one. On the day his divorce with Catherine somewhere. was finalized in 1983, Thomas married Becky Galt. Over the next couple of years, Becky would become involved in drugs through Thomas's influence and would be forced to watch him when he brought home another woman to have sex with him in the couple's basement. Thomas would once again take out numerous life insurance policies Some on like his reverse wife. Cock the shit. couple fell on hard times, and while he was left to scrape and borrow to make ends meet, he never missed a single payment on any of the life insurance policies, even if it meant having Excuse the power turned off in the family home. So this motherfucker literally just made sure he paid life insurance and didn't pay any other bills. Fuck. What a dark, motivated person. One day, Becky was found dead in her bed from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Thomas would be brought in and questioned and Smiling. eventually charged with her murder. Where's Officers Steve? took Thomas Randolph Jr. into custody after new evidence implicated him in the shooting. Eric Tarantino is the prosecution star witness. Tarantino. I've heard that name before. Tarantino is in protective custody. He says his life is Tarantino, in danger for testifying. A man. Eric Tarantino would come forth and offer a earth-shattering revelation. Tarantino would tell investigators and then members of the jury that he and Thomas had become friends at work some time before. After Tarantino was laid off, he began doing Fuck odd jobs to help anything, Thomas out. At some Thomas. point during their relationship, Thomas began by saying that he Thomas. had many life insurance policies on Becky. He then began discussing ways with Tarantino that the pair could do her in before settling on a botched burglary scheme that would have Tarantino kill the woman and then shoot Thomas in the leg before fleeing what? the scene. I Tarantino just don't understand. couldn't go through with I get so dumbfounded by this shit. Like, I've got a pretty crappy life sometimes, but I can't imagine, like, starting to fucking kill people to try and get money out of it. It's like, what? Like, how weird and callous do you have to be to be like, hey, dude. You know what? Got this bitch. I got his life insurance. So now we can kill her together. That's a crazy fucking time. With it, and he told Thomas that he was out. He then alleged that Thomas told him, "You know too much, so it's either you or her." Tarantino still refused, it's so Thomas beat shit. him up, shoved him into the passenger seat of a car, drove him to the place where Tarantino's wife worked, and then threw him out of the car and into a parking lot. Thomas then walked into the building, up to the it's door, LGTV took off the bloody crystals. gloves he was wearing, and dropped Altogether, them in yeah. front of her before storming off. Tom was taken into custody, charged for the murder of his wife, while being investigated for trying to murder Eric. Tom's defense attempted to discredit the state's witnesses, while also painting Becky as a mentally ill drug addict, even though Tom was apparently the one who got her addicted to drugs in the first place. Thomas's defense in court painted Becky... Now, the fact in these days, it's always the man's fault. But if this is modern... If this was just done this past year, I don't think it would fly in court that people would say that he got her to do drugs. I think people make their own decisions with drugs, but I do understand, like, 
cult-like influence, which is what they're trying to obviously portray when you look at his red eyes here. He is having been suicidal for years, torn between depression and drug abuse. They also said that in no way did the evidence point to anyone but Becky having pulled the trigger on the gun that had killed her. The attempt to have Tarantino permanently silenced was nothing more than the result of trying to shut up someone who was lying about him. In 2017, Thomas' first wife would come to the trial and testify that Becky had reached out to her for help early in the relationship. Oh, no, we're not playing this fucking game. We are not playing this game. He had a lot of extracurricular do it, activities, Danos. Um, <laughs> namely other women. During our marriage, I wouldn't Quentin really Tarantino call wasn't it a there. marriage per se. He wasn't there, but Eric Tarantino was. No individual um, who who is Eric Tarantino? Only comes back to Yes. <coughs> she married. Tom the day that we our divorce was final and she expressed Bro, feeling fear hero when things wars. escalated with Tom we're keen as <laughs> we're not touching you man looks like some fucking cuck leave shit leave anyway she looks could. like some fucking and I would help her shit. if she wanted me to don't do it um, don't talk about have it. you carried a picture of that I love you don't talk about it yes I have it with me why to remind me I've put all these emotions on a shelf for 40 years and now I'm having to pull everything back down but I think that picture gives me strength oh really to express Vicky Randall what would I need play to express hero wars. for me and for her <laughs> Thomas would plead guilty to tampering with a witness and serve an 18 month term for that but he was acquitted on the murder charges when the jury prison. could not find him guilty, oh, instead in, believing the defense attorney's anymore. assertions that she had killed herself. Thomas would collect about $250,000 no from life insurance policies that he had on Becky. He would ba also ba turn ba around ba and sue the ba local ba police ba department ba for Thomas wrongful and prosecution would and wars. receive a settlement reported oh, in the range of another they have quarter a of a million dollars. After serving his sentence, Talk Thomas petitioned off. the state of Utah Isn't and crazy. had the record of his conviction Look and acquittal. Look how steezy this guy is. Could you imagine killing someone, getting off from it, and then smiling with that fucking kind of moustache? And thinking that you're State of Utah the and had the record of his conviction and acquittal expunged from his record. Oh. But as the saying goes, that's not all. Thomas would marry again, this time gun. to a woman named Leona. The Ooh, marriage would last and that's only thing. Who marries people she like this? That's and just, ten I, years I can't later, blame. she would pass away from cancer. I, 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 Thomas met his I next wife, Gaina Alma, it, through a classified ad in a local newspaper. The two hit some off quickly on and they idiots. married soon classified after. Paper. Within one month, he had already taken out a life insurance policy on the woman. Shortly Married, into the relationship, though, a friend of Gaina's who happened paper. to work for the local... That's like some crazy shit. Like, that's literally, you could just find subjects wherever you want because there's vulnerable people that just want love. It's crazy. Police department found out who the woman had married and warned her to stay away from him. Their relationship quickly turned violent and there was a terrible incident that happened before she decided to leave him and that probably saved her life. Leona we'll let Gaynor's like testimony Hero from Wars. the trial speak for itself. Now I'd like to talk to you about an incident, uh, I believe, soon after the gun solvent cleaning that you described in the bathroom. Can you tell ladies and gentlemen of this jury what happened at your kitchen table? Yeah, what happened? Supposedly I was told the gun was... There was no bullets in the gun. That motherfucker's like to smoke a long time. She loves her Marlboro fucking Reds. That's what the defendant had told you? Yes, and that he was cleaning the gun at the dining room table. And the gun went off and put a... What's in... Not very far away from me, I put a hole in the kitchen floor. Would it be fair to say that the hole was inches away from you? Yes, but I could see the smoke actually coming up out of the floor. As you testify here today, ma'am, do you believe that based upon what you know, 
uh, about the situation and your then husband Thomas Randolph that the shooting in the kitchen was an attempt to kill you. Yes. It would also come to light that a man named Glenn had been contacted by Thomas Fucking during Glenn. their marriage with an offer Glenn's. to pay him to you kill look her. You look up Steve's and Glenn's. Especially when they've got these moustaches. I don't know how anyone ever trusted anyone that looked like this with these glasses and moustaches. That's what every fucking pedophile looks like. She oh, sees smoke coming killer. out of anything. <laughs> that bitch just sees smoke. Make us quick money. It's because it's coming out of her fucking face. Well, Marble red lady. Well, I can give you a car if you do your own. You make quick money. That's what you're talking about. Glenn is keen on hero wars. <laughs> Gaina and Thomas's Glenn divorce would hero come soon the after. Thomas, though, would begin seeing a married woman named Frances. Frances would just six months later How's divorce this? her. How's he getting so much pussy? That's my biggest question. How is this guy getting pussy? husband and come to marry and live with Thomas. She like also bring along her daughter, Rachel. Frances brought along her own life insurance policies as well, ones that eventually had Thomas named as the sole beneficiary. Thomas? She also brought along look a, like a serious guy. heart condition, one that required serious surgery, but that had to be put off for some time. After the marriage was finalized, though, Thomas pushed her to go ahead and have nah, the surgery. He this. also got her to videotape a new version of her will. You want me to go ahead because and do it's now? attached to Francis. This is fucking weird, and this man. This is Francis Louise Randolph. And I'm making this tape so that people will know what I want for Rachel, for myself, when I pass away. I would like for Tom to raise Rachel because he's a stepdad to her and Tommy. I hope you never have to look at this tape because I hope we do it and put it away because I love you too much to think someday I'll be an idiot. Asshole. I love you, Tommy. Was that him in the background saying, that's all? Uh, what do you want done with yourself? And for my burial, I would like to be cremated and cut along. Uh, with Tom in the place. I don't want to be separated from it, so please, Tom, do what you think is best because I know you do what's right. Francis wants Francis. hero wars. Bro, like, uh, besides the hero wars thing, yeah, but that's dark as hell. Like, he was filming her will and saying, what do you want done with you? Knowing full well he's going to kill her for her life insurance. That's some Dark shit. Not long after, went into the hospital and had the heart surgery. It was a success, and she began a stay in the hospital for. Yeah, it was for the hospital, but he was gonna kill her. Recovery. She was visited frequently by both Thomas and her daughter Rachel. On one visit, Thomas would tell Rachel to run along and give him some private time in the room with her mother because there was something they needed to talk about. Minutes later, doctors and nurses rushed into the room code as blue, code blue, code heart blue. unexpectedly gave out and she died. Thomas would refuse to allow them to autopsy face. his wife's body, claiming Aww. that he didn't want her to be cut up again. He then had her quickly cremated, and the remains were placed in some of her many pill bottles that she had accumulated over the years from her heart conditions. He told others that that was what she wanted. Afterwards, custody of Rachel would return to her biological father. Thomas, however, would sue the hospital for negligence and receive a settlement, along with life insurance payouts, that would total an estimated... But the dude obviously fucking put a pill on her face, right? He stole her new heart. Did $1.2 million. Fucking ate it. Unattached and newly wealthy look again, like a dude. Thomas could have just disappeared into the sun. That doesn't look like a man. Set fading away. Put me in the Something, Indian however, tubs. lured I've met a lot of men that look a bit strange, but like, dude, the blonde, long hair and like, Obviously, your good skin regime, like, he's, he's been using moisturizer and shit. That's, like, <laughs> Caitlin Randolph.
Just saying. ...him back to marriage and this rather lucrative bit of skullduggery he had perfected. Thomas and Jenna. that is when he met and eventually caused the death of his sixth wife, Sharon. Now that we've caught you back up, you can see all of the similarities in these cases, just as the investigating officers did. The initial story of burglary gone wrong had looked solid, barring a couple of small details like the mask and the condition of the seemingly unburglarized house until you look back at the pattern of his prior marriages. It doesn't take much to see that either he came across this plan early and never got to fully execute it until his sixth marriage, or he had been refining the process along the way. And yeah, that's what so. made up much of the bulk of the Safe prosecution's case. After Thomas's arrest in 2009, he immediately went out and hired famed hey, criminal hey. defense attorney Gabriel Grasso. Known for many high-profile cases, Grasso once represented O.J. Simpson like in wise. court when the man was charged with <laughs> a robbery in law. Sort of mean. Especially the last three. It's like he's trying to dress and act and wear like the. It's, it's like. It's like one of those psycho fucking people that is actually trying to imitate the people and then take their life, take their soul or something. He's got some fucking evil in this guy. Las Vegas. Thomas shit. was ridding up a for a battle, and he had, he had shown... brown it hair was... when he had brown haired wives. Yeah, you're right. And then, but then you know, it's also at a time when you couldn't be trans, so the guy was like just living vicariously through his wives potentially. Um, slightly queer, slightly gay, but couldn't be. Just completely in the closet. So then took out the aggression on them. It all makes sense to me. ...his disdain for the courts Fucking already when he was facing extradition so from Utah to Las Vegas. When drawn up before a district... as well. Like, what's up with the cheekbones? He's had work done too. ...court judge at that time, he found that he was standing before the same man who had overseen his trial back in 1987, <laughs> Judge Rodney Page. Good luck. On entering seeing this man, the Desert News reported that Thomas laughed and said loudly, Hi, Judge. Nice to see you. I'm sorry I didn't send you a Christmas card again. Hey, there's not any chance you're going to Las Vegas to be a judge there. Judge Page was not moved. Thomas continued, say, Judge Page, I'm so glad to see you in person. I've got to say, this is the same coming back from Davis County, and it's going Picked to have the same result. Judge Page replied man, bro, by telling dude. the clerk, no bail. Yeah, exactly. That's man. the other thing, too. As Thomas yeah. was let out, he yelled back at the courtroom, Thank you, Judge Page. It was good seeing you again. Once reaching Las Vegas and retaining Grasso as his attorney, Thomas settled down into forming a defense. It was during this time, about eight months in, that Grasso withdrew from the case. Ah. He explained that Thomas was no longer able to pay for his services. Thomas would go on to retain a pair of attorneys only to fire yeah, them a few months do down payment. the road. Uh, that wouldn't be anything to do with payment. He just, he just wouldn't be able to defend him. He Road, he had absolutely no praise for them. I've been, in, I've done a murder trial before, so I know how it sort of works. The only thing that concerns me about going to trial is these turns for lawyers. Thomas would continue to delay the trial using the Sounds like a fucking trans, doesn't it? Blame everyone that has any, any skills. I don't mean to be rude to trans, but like, you know, classic trans is, uh, especially in your closet, is be aggressive and rude to others that have skills and are trying to help you. Uh, now the lawyers are turds. Because you can't afford them. Not their fault you killed a bunch of women. Because you just this wanted to be one. This and that tactic. If you just want to be a woman, don't kill women for it. And eventually, he did come to trial with representation some eight years later in 2017. Upon entering court, Thomas was more than willing to make a mockery of the proceedings again. He entered the courtroom now with his Jeez. long white hair in pigtails and made statements that now people couldn't tell if he was a man or a woman. Obviously. Fuck, what was I saying the whole time? ...not wanting something like this Trends to be used as a tactic to later declare the trial was biased by his looks, the judge ordered Thomas to cut his hair before returning to court. He did so, and the trial went on. During the trial, a great part of the case man rested man. upon the history we have recounted here. We've covered that, that there earlier. was a pattern a in the relationships of Thomas's life and that Sorry similarities that between anyone. the death of his Women second wife and, and his children. sixth wife were far, far too powerful to ignore. A jury would find Thomas Randolph 
guilty on two counts of murder. See the jury in the above entitled case, having found the defendant, Thomas William Randolph, guilty of count two, count murder three, of count the first four, degree count with five, the count of the six, weapon, count seven. Sharon Claus Randolph imposed a sentence of death. <clears throat> Yeah, I told Ladies you he was going to get death earlier. Uh, uh, two minutes in, I said this guy's dying. Yes. You're done. Protect family fun with banana so bugs, guilty, getting the death penalty. You're done. So I thought it was from Florida because it seems so crazy, but he's being tried in Vegas because most of the shit was in Vegas. But hey, Vegas is crazy too. He would also show up later to sentencing wearing a Dallas Cowboys jersey, one featuring the number of Tony Romo. After being given the death sentence for what each case... What does that mean case, to... Thomas us. made no verbal remarks. He did, however, turn to the press in attendance and give them two thumbs up. Afterwards, he explained to the press in a jailhouse interview why he wore the football jersey to the sentencing. Well, since I've been 12, I've, I've been a Cowboys fan. My dad wasn't really into football at the start. Cowboys and Indians, then as I got older and started Becoming a fan of football, it gives me comfort, and uh, even in here. Sorry. What's the significance of wearing the jersey today of all days? I so suspect I'll get up and say something today. It's the end. I was going to wear it yesterday for my mom, but uh, they didn't bring pants in, so. Are you able to follow the team from CCDC? Not really. Every once in a while, you'll see bits and pieces of the game or reading the paper. But that's about it. You want to take the tag off? Okay. And you would think that that would just about be all there is. But there was yet to be another trial. A case was brought back on appeals because his attorneys argued that all of his testimonies from the 1986 trial that were presented by the Utah prosecutor and law enforcement officers at the 2017 trial were just hearsay. They argued that since the individuals were not actual eyewitnesses to anything that had been offered, none of it could be considered as evidentiary. Even though a Petroselli hearing was held before the trial to determine whether the information would be admissible, the original decision had been made in error. They argued that since it was hearsay... Just getting to the end of this, if anyone has any videos that we want to uh, react to, just chuck them in now. Like, let's... um. I'm gonna. I'm probably just gonna go and find a Mr. Ball, and after this, and I might fall asleep, and then he'll be me snoring for the next couple of hours. But you know, we'll just see what goes on. Uh, any videos? Any suggestions? Please let me know. Say it could only potentially prejudice a jury that heard it. In short, since the man had been acquitted in that trial by presenting the evidence again in this manner, jurors might be inclined to view him not purely on the grounds of what had happened in this particular instance. In short, rumors of past deeds could make suspicions look like truths in this case. Thomas was granted a new trial and returned to court in 2023. The case was heard again with a mind to stick to what was pertinent Reason. to this date and time. While much of the content remained the same, two of Sharon's friends added in information that pointed to Sharon's suspicions that she was going oh. to come to a bad end at Thomas's hands or his plans. Antoinette Ravens. Beam, a friend of Sharon, That's talked about her relationship with the woman and then a very peculiar thing that Sharon and Thomas did right before the fateful day. There were times when Sharon was upset because Tommy had been seeing someone else, right? Yes. Her friend, so I'm allowed to tell her, you know, I don't think someone should be planning her death. Another one, this time one who worked at a hair salon with Sharon, cool. told how she had <laughs> been told it was an unhappy marriage. She said that Sharon's fears led her to get the new will, one done just a scant few days before she met her untimely death. The marriage was going well, poorly, very bad. On how many occasions do you think you expressed concerns to Sharon? Probably every time I would talk to her. I'm over here, ma'am. If you could just look this way. Sure. Thank you. If, and just for the record, I mean, you appear to be glaring at Tommy as you sit here today. You'd agree with that assessment, right? Yes. Because you pretty much hate him, don't you? I wouldn't say that, but I hate him. Okay, use your word. What is it that you have for him? I abhor him. 
In relatively Fuck short Google. order, a jury Fuck once it. again found Thomas Randolph guilty of two counts of murder. Is Rather than being part? sent to death row, more however, more he would now be serving a it's life out. sentence. Prosecutors said at the time, at his age, death would eventually come for him anyhow. It is a sad and sordid tale, but now a man known to many as the Black Widower is behind bars with no chance of parole or pardon. There is a lot to be said that justice was slow but sure, still one has to wonder what would have happened to the people that he crossed later on if he had been found guilty for the 1987 murder. We can never really know. It's a horrible thought that actually, you know, like he obviously, um, he obviously had it in him the whole time. Pretty fucked up. Ah, it's a podcast though. It's a bit, oof. kind of want to watch a little bit of the, oh, Crime of Shadow Island. Ashley Murphy, that's interesting. You see my, my, uh, my YouTube background is getting a bit nasty. A little bit dark at times, but I, I just enjoy this sort of stuff at night. Um, God, I'm not going to go here, but it's three minutes ago. Oh, no, I don't want to go into it. Too political. Don't want to do it. Um, I do have a lot of feelings about that, but I'm not doing it. Uh, any suggestions? Uh, I may just... Uh, how long are we streaming for? A couple of hours? I think we're on for... Oh, geez, almost three hours. All right, so we've got a while. Um, I probably need to actually get some rest soon. If no one has any suggestions, uh, that you can drop in the chat for any videos to watch, then I might just kill it there. Um, I nearly gagged up blocking this train. Oh, here you go. Got one squirting the champagne on us, mate. Regardless, though, I mean, I bloody oh. love this job. Whoa! Oh, shit. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. That actually got me. Oh. I, I need to relax, though. This is fucking way too late for this shit. Um probably watch a bit of murder mystery by myself or something. I really appreciate everyone that's joined the stream. Um, oh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix build up and drivers parade stream two hours ago. So we're probably racing now. Um, fucking way too late for this but, shit. Uh, um, thank you all for watching. Probably watch Let's a bit just, of murder uh, mystery do a bit of Brad by myself for a or second I really kill it. appreciate everyone that's joined the um, stream. Love you all. Um, oh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix build up and drivers parade stream two hours ago. So, Shut up, Brad. We're probably racing now. Um, fucking way too late for this but, uh, shit. Um, thank you all for watching. Here we go. Now it's probably coming up again. It's going to triple up. It's going to triple up. It's going to keep going. And then sure. you won't be able to hear anything. But just me, 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 me. Um, I am apologizing for it. Shut up, Brad. like this. Um, probably racing now. I'm going to go. Um, just wanted some chaos at the end of the stream. Uh, thank you all for watching. Here we go. Yourself. Now it's coming up again. It's going to be a truth for life. 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 It's going to be a truth for life